and welcome to the Comic Conspiracy episode episode four. Off to a wonderful, wonderful start. Oh. Episode four thirty two. My name is uh, my name. My name is. Hold on, just I need, just need to got a little sip of my Starbucks here. Hold on, one you're, second. you're parched. You're parched. Take take a good drink of that. <sighs> All right, that caramel. It's even better when it's free, right? Oh, that, that caramel macchiato <laughs> hits the spot, yeah. Kevin. Thank you. My name is Ryan, Team 2019, the winner Higgins. And with me this week is... Brock Sager, indifferent to the teams. Uh, I mean, you can introduce Toby, but I don't think he'll remember it. <laughs> and Kevin. <laughs> and Kevin. <laughs> so this is our end of year episode, part one of two. Now, Toby is here. He's our live, kind of. He's our live intoxicated audience. Uh, I believe Scott and Lane are both on their way. Mm-hmm. They should be here in plenty of time for our movie and TV end of the year wrap up stuff. I'm hoping they are able to make it for the comic wrap up. Um, we're going to do things a little bit differently this year. Uh, in the past, we've kind of done like a top three list and blah blah blah. We're just going to be honest. Let, let's just talk about comic books here for a second, okay? Um, or should we wrap up? The, a certain topic oh, we'll, here at the beginning. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Okay. We'll get to that. This has been an insane year. <laughs> yes. I mean, on a personal level for a lot of us, mm-hmm. on a business level for the store, uh, absolutely crazy year. Um, I have not had a chance to read as many comics as I would like. Now, I, I keep current on a lot of stuff. Yeah. Right. Uh, but when we've done our top lists in the past, uh, we try to give an equal representation to Marvel and DC plus the independent books. And to some other uh, of our favorites, I, I mean, I struggled last year at the end of the year to get through a lot of stuff for our podcast, and I didn't get through half of what I wanted mm. to. I didn't even attempt to this year because I knew I wasn't going to be able to catch up on the books. I've read a lot of number ones. I, I kind of trade read trade uh, trade read a lot of Marvel stuff. When an arc's done, I read through a big stack of it. Um, my, I am not current on a lot of stuff right now. So Your let's independent just, reading is it's virtually so, It's no. so bad right now. It's so bad because I have a bunch of Volume 1 trades and I have a bunch of like hardcovers and like I just haven't read too many yeah. of them, right? Yeah. I'm like, oh, yes, cool. It's the new criminal. Of course I'm going to get this. And it goes in the pile to read one day. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, we're going to do something a little different with our top comics of the year. We're just going to go in a nice little round table. And discuss our favorite comic books of 2019. Mm-hmm. No ranking, really. No order. We're going to talk stories, characters. And, you know, we don't do a lot of that on this podcast. I mean, we do talk a lot of news, and we'll talk about very big, big major events. Bigger events or bigger titles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but we want to kind of focus on some of our favorite titles from this year. And because uh, no news, no news this week, next week. Uh, there's apparently going to be a, a podcast the week of um, New Year's. There wasn't going to be. Uh, it's possible to have an interview. I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, at least the plan is uh, Charlie and Bryce, with the help of Toby, are going to have their end of year wrap up as a separate episode that's going to go live in the feed. I want is that to... for the Patreon exclusive nope, nope, or nope. just that's extra? just going to be on the regular feed. Okay. Uh, it's going to go up the week of New Year's. I want because we're not recording that week either. Um, I wanted it to be as an attachment to these two episodes, but that's just not going to happen because I haven't recorded them yet. So. Uh, we were expecting to have a skip week that week, but hey, now we'll have something. Mm-hmm. So we're just going to wait for uh, Charlie and Bryce to get their stuff to me, and, and Toby's going to kind of, hopefully, I think he's still planning to kind of mediate, moderate, as much as you can moderate Bryce. Um, so that's going to hopefully go up the week of New Year, same same normal time. Mm-hmm. And uh, next Tuesday night, we'll, on Christmas Eve... We'll have our wonderful end of year uh, comic book and TV, uh, comic book uh, TV and movie episode part two, part two, which we're recording later tonight, but it'll go up next week. Uh, you know, hashtag content. Gonna, gonna always have something coming out. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're gonna talk about our favorite comic books of 2019. Now, there is one that we're gonna save for the very end mm-hmm. because we're gonna have a big discussion about it. And that is Doomsday Clock number 12. Mm-hmm. So if you do not want to hear about Doomsday Clock number 12, uh, you can just check out after we do the listener uh, uh, top top list. Mm-hmm. That's going to be the final thing we do. And uh, then we're going to talk about Doomsday Clock and Doomsday Clock number 12. So if you want to stick around for that, uh, this will probably not go up Tuesday night. I have no intention of this actually going up it, Tuesday well, night. Yeah. Well, today has been a... We can talk course about, of a day. Yeah, we can talk about that in a second. Um, uh, hopefully this goes up Wednesday morning, the day Doomsday Clock 12 is out. 
So um, if you guys get to the comic store and have already a chance to read it, you're good to go. If not, you may want to hold off on the last part of this episode until you've had a chance to read it. Um, yeah, this week is probably the biggest comic book week we've ever had in the store. Mm -hmm. um, we had to pull all the independent books from the new release wall because there just isn't room. Yep. I, I'm putting them on top of our back issue bins because I don't know what else to do. There, There's no room. There's no space. It, it's it's absolutely insane. Um, DC's takes up like two-thirds of our new release wall. I, they've... We were complaining the other month about, like, they're barely putting anything out. Now it's like, whoa, 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 whoa slow, slow down, down DC. There, DC. Come on. Like, well, I, I, so. Give the rest of the book something else, uh, some shelf space. So the, the difficult part, especially with this week, was it was not only the books this week, it was next week's books. Now, next week's books are a drop in the bucket compared to, to this week's books. Well, I, no, but that's not, those aren't on the shelf. I'm just talking about the stuff from this week. No, I know, but for next week, for the week of Christmas, we got that stuff this time as right, well. Right, so right, So the shipment is, is humongous. it's like two and a half shipments. It's. And at, at one time. And absolutely so, insanity. Uh, you had me go down to pick it up from FedEx yet on Monday. Yeah, early, because early. everyone else was getting um, early, and I'm like, screw no, it, no, no, you're it's ready. Gonna, no, no, you, you were uh, – the only reason I was getting it so you could read Doomsday Clock early. That's the only reason I was getting it. I'm not the big reason. <laughs> uh, the second reason was so we could actually break down boxes and process <laughs> it. Did you get to come last night to read it? I don't let you. Oh, no. I'm not sighing about not being able to read it. <laughs> You're sighing that it's here? I, we'll come back to it. Okay. okay. <laughs> you said okay. you wanted to save he's it for not, the end. He's yeah. Not, he's not, yeah, yeah. He's not Dude, ready, we'll he's not ready yet. To the end. Um, but uh, Monster Monster Week. Well, we um, ended up having – our average is what? Three to four subscription boxes? Long boxes to put away yeah. for subscriptions. Yeah, it's seven. Today's was seven. <laughs> and that's just for this week. Yeah. Craziness. Um, I mean, Doomsday Clock, Batman, Justice League, and Last Night are almost the equivalent of, like, any other week by itself. Mm -hmm. Just those four books alone. It's just, just it was well, and, and you have, madness. you have three uh, pre, uh, All the Black Label plus, stuff. Yep. Lab, yep. Uh, Prestige Plus. Um, black Label books out. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. Just crazy. All right. It's a lot of books. Well, you know when they published a lot of comic books? That was the year 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, in a couple of weeks, we're going to do our look back at the numbers, Comic Con will post our 2019 numbers, so we'll kind of go through that. I, I would like to do our best of decade list. The plan is to do that sometime in January, maybe the end of January. I want to give us a little time to get that together. Uh, but for now, we're going to talk about our favorite comics from 2019. It's going to go around the room, start at the beginning Let's start at my list. I got my nice little list here. Well, I, wait, I thought you said don't have a list. No, no, not a not a ranked not list. Not a ranked list. Oh, just have just, oh, just general okay. list. Just, 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 I just have various books that I would like to talk about. This no order. Every time. It, no it's, order. It's, okay. No, I made it very clear. Um, no order. No anything special. Okay. We're just talking about our favorite comics of 2019. And of course, I have to start with Batman. Mm -hmm. Tom King. When we all love Tom King on this podcast. We talk about it enough. Everyone here knows about our love of Batman. Um, hashtag Batman is California. But this – we are at the end. Now, Brock, uh, no spoilers. Yes. You did sit down and read. I did sit down uh, and read it last night. Yeah, you read the final issue of Tom mm -hmm. King's Run of Batman. Now he's going to continue this in Batman Catwoman. Yes. All right. Um, I've been uh, – I've not had a chance to read it. Doom's like the only comic I've read. So uh, don't don't spoil any of my conversation. Don't don't – don't spoil anything for me here. Um, you know, I, I, I on, put on Twitter, you know, we are looking at potentially three of the biggest comic books of the decade shipping this week alone. Doomsday Clock 12, Batman 85, and last night, uh, number three, right? Yes. The final Snyder Capullo Batman book mm -hmm. um, after completely – it's not reinventing, but really catapulting him to the top of the charts, yeah. uh, New 52. Um, obviously, Doomsday Clock. We'll I mean, Batman is dom Batman has pretty much dominated this entire decade. <laughs> it has, it has. Batman's been the number one superhero comic every single year uh, from 2011 till today, and it continues to be the number one selling superhero comic every single, well, almost every single month. But year to year, you know, when you take all the issues and you put them together over the course of the year, any other ongoing superhero book it just blows it out of the water. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Batman. I mean, I know, I know there's haters out there. There's plenty of haters of the Batman run, but man, as we've been getting to the towards the end here of the run, god damn, it's been so good. Mm -hmm. Eighty four, the issue uh, with the sort of the the backwards or like the sort of the the the, the uh, going back in time narrative uh, with Thomas Wayne to sort of his origin all the way through Flashpoint and mm -hmm. uh, the what happens during the Flashpoint uh, uh, miniseries, the Ryan Azzarello one. 
to basically the you know the, the death of his son, uh, all the stuff <clears throat> that goes through his 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 whole backstory. God, between that issue and the annual. With all the like the little the, the short the little an, vi- the annual uh, was the vignettes the, that just the little the daily journal of Alfred oh, love Pennyworth that yeah it was they he has su- he has such a great way of playing with concept of of time and storytelling in comics that so few people do mm-hmm. no one really does this on a regular basis and Tom King just nails it every time he does it um, you know. I, I, I'm okay when a ten issue series takes place over the course of like a couple de- or those twelve issues or whatever, like eleven, eleven and eleven in a big issue. Um, uh, the, the city of Bane has kind of been. There's a lot you have to sort of infer, mm-hmm. right? A lot of city of Bane's been been this year. Well, we're not watching city. It just city of Bane isn't about it. Just Bane is taking over the city. We just assume like that's happened. Like we see little snippets of it here and there. But there isn't like a it, six it, part miniseries explaining yeah. the whole how the whole structure of Gotham City works. It's just Bane took over. You just can't. You just have to acknowledge it through the uh, course of the Batman book. Just take it for what it is. This is what Batman's doing and how he saves. How he. Uh, Spoiler alert, he's going to win at the end of the day, right? I mean, yeah. for the most part. Uh, I don't think Gotham's going to be run by Bane for the, for the remainder of the DC Universe. So, yeah, uh, uh, the City of Bane stuff's been great. Um, the art is just absolutely top-notch. A um, bunch of the artists, uh, Tony Daniel, Clayman, um, obviously we had a couple of issues. I don't remember if it, was, it must have been the very early part of this year. I'm scared of his, his, his issues are so good. I don't well, remember. we've had Lee Weeks. We've had... It, dude, Lee Weeks' art is so good on this series, too. Um uh, he's just had so many great artists uh, working with him. Yeah, I, I don't think there's anything more I could say about Batman that I haven't said. It's always on our top lists of the year. And, um, I mean, one, it's a shame to see him go, but two, he's a, I mean, 85 issues is as long as a run as anyone has in modern I mean, comics. he's had 80... Or like 80... 90? No, well, it's like, 80, it's like 80 issues if you minus out the, the crossovers and the... Oh, yeah. But whatever. I mean, yeah. still, it's a, it's a, it's such a humongous run. Um yeah, Batman Catwoman, uh, well, maybe April or beyond. We don't know when it's going to come out, but they're giving, um, they're giving Clayman some time to get, get the issues in the can. Mm-hmm. So we'll see where it goes. Batman, hate to see Tom King off, but can't wait to see what it does next. Mm-hmm. Brock, if you've got a lot of books in 2019 oh, that you're a fan of, give us one. a lot of books. Um, I would have to say uh, I really, really enjoyed Heroes in Crisis. Um, I just thought it was... It was a different take on um, – it, 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 it brought a crisis down to more of a – like a personal level versus something that was, um, you know, elevated to like the, the multiverse is ending and all this mm-hmm. stuff. So, um, yeah. Although they're sort of dealing with that a little bit now in, in Flash Forward. In, in Flash the- <laughs> Forward, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was – it's it was a, like I just – it really, really enjoyed, you know, reading every issue and – you know, kind of seeing different styles of um, storytelling come out in that with the, like the nine panel uh, interview scenes that we would get mm-hmm. out of there, um, and just the huge splash pages of beautiful Clayman mm-hmm. art. Um, so yeah, and I, I mean, a lot of people, you know, didn't really like the the outcome of it um, with you know Wally kind of being the villain, so to speak. Um, but I think that you know, if there's a character that that can uh, go through that and then come out the other side uh, better is Wally. So, yeah, Heroes in Crisis for me was a really good book. Yeah, I, I definitely, uh, uh, I really like what they tried to do with that series. It was very unique. Um, I'm a big Wally fan. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to see the character portrayed in this light forever. I mean, they're not. They're very no. rapidly fixing this. Not that it was broken, but just they're going off in a, you know, a, a, this is a very different uh, kind of uh, push well, for this so, character. But I want to see where they go with it. I like this idea. It's, 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 and there's, there's comic book ways to, to reverse it or get out of it. So, well, so the thing is, is okay like with, me? With, what, what, with what happened in Wally, with Wally and Heroes in Crisis, um, uh, Joshua Williamson actually has taken that in, put it in Flash. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, with what's going on with Flash right now and his powers being, all chaotic and crazy, and he has to wear um, uh, power dampener 
to not use the speed force. Yeah. Because if he uses the speed force, he's like a bomb. So um, it, it it's kind of it, to me it's I, I understand the like what they did with Wally and now they're doing somewhat with Barry, but uh, yeah, I think it's a book that definitely on a second read a lot. I think people will enjoy it more. Well, there were some delays. I, I do want to go through and read it all all in one one sitting. Kevin, you got a non non Tom King book for us? <laughs> well, I was going to say on, <laughs> or, Brock, on Brock's pick, that art was really great. Oh, yeah. fantastic! And of the that I can think of off the top of my head, just as we're sitting here, of everything that came out in 2019, if there's one series that I could buy an original page from, it might be Heroes in Crisis. Yeah. I love the art. Yeah, Clayman is – he's come up in the past few years and just his work on Batman and oh, Heroes all of Crisis all of King's just, guys are just, uh, just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So I think for me, thinking back on the year, my number one books, plural – are Hawks and Pox. Yeah. Um, just a lot of votes for that. How our, much fun is it or was it to be talking about the X-Men again? <laughs> like when we have, I think two episodes talking about those series, at one least, about the yeah. halfway point and yeah. one at the, yeah. Wow. That was just such a fun ride. Yeah. And I like the art in both books. Um, it was like watching, it was like binging two really good TV series and you're just alternating. Yeah. Episodes, alternating series week to week, yeah. but you never lose track. I mean, yes, it, the machinations got sometimes a little confusing in the moment, <laughs> but I think it all held together at the end. Yeah, that was just so much fun. Now, I have not read any of the X regular X Men book that started, so I can't. Oh, you've read any of them? I read the first issue of Excalibur. Oh, okay. What a, what a random about, one to read. <laughs> well, because I like the old Excalibur team oh, from the eighties, okay, okay. but I mean. Hawks and Pox, I don't expect an ongoing monthly book to be told at that pace. It was just like one of the great action movies you'll ever see. Just yeah. It just never let up. And so it's not that I'm scared to read the regular book. It's more just like I know it's not going to hit those heights because it can't. You just can't sustain that magic. Now, look. House of Powers, I thought were fantastic. Mm. Right, right. I, I will agree. That's we're all. It's scary that we're all agreeing on a... Marvel book. It, enjoy those feelings. Don't bother. Don't just don't even. Okay. Just don't even bother. Okay. <laughs> um, they're really rough. Yeah. Even X Men is real rough, and we have Wolverine coming, and Giant Size X Men coming, and Moira coming, and in, and the X Men FF coming. But they canceled Fallen Angels. And we're already like they're already soliciting up to like issue seven and eight, and threes are just coming out. So uh, they are, well, and, and, and X Men is already delayed. I saw that. So uh, well, we also have the the also we also have the how they're publishing this as a, like a like a trade. It's not going to collect one and one to six of Excalibur. It's collecting well, they all the will. number one. They will. They but, will. Right now they're doing all issue ones, all issue ones, all issue and then twos. all issue twos, all issue and then threes. all issue threes. Yeah, and it's just kind of like, yeah. Because what did you think of Excalibur? Like I said, I don't want to turn this into that bash oh, fest no. of the stuff after. Let's stick with the good stuff. Yeah, let's talk about how it was a great was comic book thrill ride that made me feel like what it used to be like to read comics at twelve years old. Yeah. Well, I, I think the great thing about how do I put this. The great thing about House and Powers is that you have no fucking idea what's going to yeah. happen, right? Mm -hmm. You know eventually this stuff is all going to go back to normal. But in the moment, and especially through the main story, you could theorize, you could guess. You know, I actually I, – I saw someone comment about this. Um, one, of my, one of my friends on Twitter uh, had a tweet about this where he said, you know, the, the quote-unquote problem with The Mandalorian – is that it's just a straightforward show. There's not a bunch of weird questions and things you can guess about, like the Watchmen TV show, for example, that you can have a shitload of podcasts theorizing mm -hmm. about, right? Hawks and Pox was that, where you're like, everyone's like, well, yeah, what is going on? You know, I mean, you're, you're it, it, think about it like Lost or Game of Thrones. Or you're like, what's going to happen next? It's not just this very straightforward kind of one and done uh, a book. Every issue of House and Power is just went off in some crazy direction, and, and you could never in a million years guess what was going to happen next. 
And there were probably half the characters in those casts who I just don't know because yeah. they're after my time on the X Men. Yeah. But I, that didn't. I figured it out. Yeah, there it didn't was an, stop your enjoyment. No, of it. and there was enough there where it's not like. I think some books have this kind of. How do I say it? Like a continuity force field where if you haven't been in from the beginning, you're not going to broach the wall. Yeah, yeah. And I think this was because I would count myself as a new reader. At least for some characters, hey, you know the old characters, but I know the you old don't know char- gold balls. No, yeah. no, but I got all I needed to know. Yeah. There's my nominee number one. Nice. That's the first. I guess I call it that because I think of it as one story. Uh, yeah, sure, it is. Those yeah. are the first two books that come to mind from this year. All right, excellent. Well, there are a lot of books <clears throat> um, this year. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of uh, go a little down. I mean, Batman's kind of a big epic book, and I get a few kind of big epic books on my list. But um, I'm gonna talk about something a little bit smaller. A little bit funnier, a little bit wacky. That is the Matt Fraction, Steve Lieber, Jimmy Olsen comic from DC. I was hopeful that this book was going to be what I wanted it to be, and it turned out to be that and more. Jimmy Olsen is hilarious. It is easily one of my favorite books of the year from DC. Um, and, and Steve Lieber, too, does – God, that guy's art. He can just – he can draw. I don't. I just. I don't want this to come off. It's kind of insulting. He could draw like the mundane so well because Jimmy by himself is mostly normal, but he then draws him in such weird situations, um, mimicking sort of older styles. Uh, I don't know, Kevin. You've read. I'm not. I'm of, not caught up. Oh, but you've you've read them, right? Yeah. Those. Every other page, the the introduction panel, yeah. <laughs> mimicking that like fifties Jimmy Olsen yeah. style, like uh, you know, a recap of this crazy situation he's in. He can he can do both of those so well. Um, they've tried Jimmy comics in the past, once or twice in the modern day, and you know they kind of tend to tend to stay with um, the 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 more kind of. Uh, uh, fantastical take on this character uh but their stories he's he's been he like he's they think he's they've killed jimmy olsen someone's assassinated jimmy olsen right and so he's sort of like set himself up as like this alternate personality to kind of like he's sort of investigating his own death and it doesn't go quite so far into the crazy you know uh uh, 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 what, what are all those Power weird? Of the week? No, the the the, the crazy old Jimmy Olsen like Turtle Boy yeah. stuff, but it, yeah. it kind of it kind of parodies a lot of those elements. Um, uh, and there's a great backstory that's sort of treading through the whole series of Jimmy Olsen and Lex Luthor's like like historic like like you know great 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 grandparents that like settled in Metropolis and their sort of whole like feud going back hundred a hundred plus a couple hundred years or something. Uh it, it is a really fun book. Um what Bendis did with Jimmy Olsen in uh action, right? Action, yeah. Uh with all the all the pre Leviathan stuff was 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 fantastic and this sort of it doesn't feel the same at, at all. But it is – it continues sort of that um, k- kind of keeping Jimmy as like that kind of adventurous cup reporter kid mm. and, and, and bringing that element of Jimmy Olsen back, which they, they they do regularly. But it's been a while since we've had like specific Jimmy Olsen stories and mm. he hasn't just been like a sidekick or a side character. So absolutely love Jimmy Olsen. One of them. And terrific. The variant covers by uh, Ben Oliver. Uh, awesome, <laughs> awesome variant covers. Yeah. <clears throat> the one this week where both the covers this week are great. There's, there's one where he's in like Batman's like Dark Knight like battle armor suit, and Jimmy's like peering out of like the helmet. <laughs> That's the main cover. And then the other one, he's uh, he's got um like Batman's helmet, all like his, his like regular cowl on, and it's all like slouched off of him. It's like way too big. You just see, like the bat shadow, like Batman's coming to yell at Jimmy Olsen. So, oh, it's so funny. Such a funny book. Rock. What's up? It's another favorite book of yours, 2019. Uh, one that I think is uh, like you're you're going for the quirky, like funny one. Uh, I'm going to go for one that's kind of under the radar, but I've really, really enjoyed it. Is a it's just a solid, solid book, and that's Freedom Fighters. Yeah, by uh, Robert Vendetti. Uh, going into the um, Earth, it's Earth X. Yeah, Earth X. Earth yeah, X. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, playing off of stuff from Multiversity from. Um, <coughs> 
that uh, the Earth X issue that that yeah. Morrison did. Yeah, di- it directly uh, takes from Morrison's multiversity he, issue. Yeah, with the uh, over 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 overman. Yeah, yeah. Um, just really just takes that story um, and and puts it into current day. Um, at least current day in Earth X. Right. It's not a. It's not a current. It's not like a DC universe. But. Yeah. It's not. It's not like it was happening. It's not like it happened right after Multiversity, where you know Overman helps Hitler take over or whatever. This is. This is way after the war is over. It's. It's you know fifty plus years after the war. Um, you're seeing you know the Führer's son and grandson in this versus um, you know Hitler himself. So. Uh, a really solid title. Vendetti just knocks it out of the park. It's really cool to see um, those kind of odd, odd, odd char- not odd characters, but uh, like Phantom, like Doll Lady and uh, Doll Man, Phantom Doll Girl, Man and, and Phantom Girl, yeah, and, yeah. Um, or it's, oh. it's 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 not Doll Man because it's it's the little girl. It's, yeah, it's, it's the doll. It's Doll Lady or whatever. I can't remember uh, the Adam uh, Black. Black, black Condor. F- black, yeah, Black Condor. Uh, Uncle Sam. Um, just, Uncle just, Sam is one of those characters that it's so – it can be so cheesy so fast. But they, Vendetti doesn't make the, – the, he does not take a cheesy turn with this yeah. one. It's, uh, it's Eddie, really Eddie, solid. Eddie Barrows, to the artist, um, he's been doing comics for quite a long time. I'm not going to say I don't like him, but I – something about his art never – quite worked for me until this run Mm -hmm. he is uh, this is beyond the art of his career he is killing it um the 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 uh, plastic men the the ss plastic men yeah are fucking terrifying yep um they like he man uh i i am yeah uh freedom fighters is also on my list um he does uh, uh, both Vendetti and Barris do an incredible job with this book. Um, I'm going to actually talk about Vendetti in a little bit here too. Uh, but this is one of my absolute highest recommendations for when the 12 issue oversized hardcover comes out. Oh yeah, as a standalone book to get and read and to give mm-hmm. this to anyone because if you just want to see a bunch of superheroes kicking Nazi ass, dude, this it's is amazing. the book for mm-hmm. you. It is so good. Um, I have not read it. That's what I'm, I'm waiting for that yeah. over, that hardcover. I've Freedom Fighters, man. They try. Tell me, Audi tried a few yeah. times. Yeah. Yeah. They tried pre pre Infinite Crisis. They, man, they try. And it just. I mean, the original concept's cool enough, but uh, they just never. This, this one hit. This yes. Modern day, no. Not, oh, I mean, the Morrison issues. Obviously, a lot of the inspiration for this mm. run, but no question. There has not been a better book with the title "Freedom Fighters" on on, on the on the header than this book. It's this this awesome. made me this made me um, think back to uh, James Robinson's uh, Justice Society of America when they Thanks when they it. went into when they went back to Earth X in those issues. Uh, what was that pre New Fifty Two stuff? Well, Robinson wasn't doing doing JSA. You mean Earth Two? No, no, no. It's not Earth Two. Oh. The the JSA went to. He did the later JSA stuff, that last series. Um, no. Or was it just Robinson started JSA before Jeff Johns came on? Yeah, I don't know. Th- this is that's not that's not that one. This is the one. This is the one. Um, like pre Flashpoint. Yeah. When 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 Green Arrow had the or Green Lantern had the horrible like lantern costume. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't like, it this wasn't. was before that stuff? Okay. God, I'm not. I'm like totally blanking on. It doesn't matter anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I'm blanking on on there being an Earth X story there. It's possible. Yeah. I just don't remember. I don't think that was Robinson, but eh, whatever. If anyway, remember, if I remember correctly, it's but. great. Mm-hmm. Free to Check is Free awesome. Files. Yeah, Kevin. So I'm going to piggyback off your pick, Ryan, and I'm going to cheat because I think these two go together, which go is it. Action Comics and Event Leviathan. Yep. Thoroughly enjoyed. Oh, here comes Scott. Um. Both of those books, action being the quote unquote more what do we want to call it realistic yeah Superman book yep event Leviathan um, really good mystery I thought yeah <sighs> Scott take a seat 
Um, We're doing our comic book round table, our favorite comic books of 2019. I only have 3% on my phone. Okay. That's the. And, oh, and turn your mic on. My, There's a charger over there. If you want, if you want anyway, to throw it in. Anyway. Um, We're getting back to you. The. The. Event Leviathan is done now, right? Yes. Okay. I liked it. I thought it was. Yeah. Well. Completely satisfying. Again, action and Event Leviathan are on my list here, too. Yeah. And I just thought those books. Uh, Event Leviathan crossed over into action a lot. It, I mean, it it's was like this. It's, one it's like Hawks and Pox almost. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed both of those comics. I am not up to date on the main Superman book at all, but I really yeah. like the the Daily Planet story in action. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what I was saying before about Jimmy Olsen kind of going undercover and and Lois and Jimmy being like real, like real reporters investigating stuff. Really dealing with uh, uh, trying to crack the story. It wasn't just "Help me, I'm Lois." You know, like that wasn't <laughs> yeah. the story. This they did. Uh, Lois is as important in *Event Leviathan* than I uh, should almost more important than Superman. Yeah. And to Alex Maleev. Oh, if there's one thing Bendis did coming over to DC, he brought his artists with him. And oh, Alex Maleev. Oh, *Event Leviathan* the art was so good. I think Maleev is better at covers and conversation scenes than traditional superhero action that's just to my taste yeah, yeah. but i really like the look of that book and the the yeah. vibe of that book and yeah highly recommend that's not a great title for a comic book i don't think event leviathan yeah <laughs> but highly recommend if you haven't read it you don't need to read action i think you could just read event yeah, leviathan you can, you can i mean it comes out of the events of action but it's just a good standalone mystery yeah, yeah. And if you have... You, you sort of have... I think you have to have some context. DC, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you have, have to have, have some. Out. Yeah, that's fair. That's well, fair. Uh, yeah. So, Kevin, for new listeners, what number is this on your list? We're not doing no numbers. numbers. No. We're just, just going around saying a book that you just, like. Just a round table. Here. So here is what we've done so far. And I, I want to continue talking about Event to Leviathan for one second. But we've done Batman, <laughs> Heroes in Crisis. Pox and Pox, but of course you are more than welcome to throw in your thoughts on any of these books as well. Jimmy Olsen, Freedom Fighters, and now Action and Event Leviathan. Um, I have a personal interest in in, Levent, in Event Leviathan. I could just never say the name of this book. Questions, The Questions, oh, yeah. Yeah. and Manhunter. Oh, yeah. I can't Spencer Manhunter. Some of my favorite characters of all time all brought back in yeah. this book. But Maliv drawing the the Vic Sage question. Yeah. There are some panels in there where I just like, <laughs> this is gold. Yep. It looked so good. Yep. And uh, I'm going to kind of bounce in with another recommendation here with this. Um, we'll, we'll do Scott next, but um, you, I bet Leviathan straight into Lois. Yeah. Lois Lane. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Again, we talk about Jimmy Olsen. When the hell has there been a good Jimmy Olsen story? Now we have, a like, there is not. There could not be a better Lois Lane ongoing comic or yeah. twelve issue run today. And again, Greg Rucka, perfect yeah. writer for it. Um, it's been really good. Oh, it's, yeah. It's, and again, the question. Yay! Yeah. My favorite characters. It. But like the nice thing so about good. Lois is that it's tied in nicely with action and Event Leviathan and even the regular Superman book. Like right. But you don't have, yeah. to, read. have to read those. It's but not. It's like. It, it naturally fits with what's going on in all of those yep. books. Yep. It works in Lois. Yep. So. Yep. Scott, throw in a yes. pick. Any uh, ranking? My pick is uh, Silver Surfer Black. Okay. Yeah. So, little Donny Cates. Little Danny uh, Coates. Danny, little, little Danny Coates. Little Danny Coates. <laughs> um, again, I, Silver Surfer I love as a character. What do you think of Trad Moore's art? I don't like the art. So the fact that I love the book... Despite the art, says a lot to say for the story. I, I, had, I had made a mention uh, the other day on the Dark Knight Golden Child how good of uh, how good the art is by um and I'm just, uh, Raphael Grandpa. Uh, Raphael Grandpa. Yeah. And someone wrote back. They're like, "Oh, what do you think about Trad Moore?" And I'm like, "Yeah, it's just the, I mean, it might just be the book. It is so. I somebody I was talking to the other day. They they." They're a little bit like, well, is doesn't it make you feel like the Mike Alred run on Silver Surfer? And I was like, no, That's because fantastic. I'm kind of used to Alred's 
just from Madman over the years, just kind of the way he draws and, and, and how he expresses the expression in the art. Again, I don't, I don't love it. I'm used to it at this point going through. It is, I'm so far behind on books. I'm like, oh, Leviathan, that sounds good. <laughs> I haven't read any of it. <laughs> well, um, the whole reason we're doing this this way is, again, from the beginning of the podcast, we're all behind on a lot of stuff. So we're just like, fuck it, no ranking. I'm not going to force people to, oh, to, I'm, to force oh, read oh, a bunch of stuff. That oh, I'm ranked. Okay. okay. Uh, well, is, that, is that Silver Surfer book an ongoing? <laughs> no. No. But, well, but it does continue directly into Guardians, the the new. Uh, or I'm um, sorry. Uh, I love it. What is Brock's looking at my list and it says Wildstorm on the bottom. I love Wildstorm. Hey, we got a bunch of. Votes. I we got a absolutely bunch of votes. love it. And I, I mean, I'm about two issues behind, but he's like, why? Why is that on your list? Well, no, number one, I haven't. Well, it's good. We'll get to that. We'll get to Wildstorm in a minute. Let's talk about Silver Surfer Black. Yeah, because it's going into. Oh, sorry, it's going to Thor. That's what it is. Because right, that's, yeah. that's Donnie Coates' yep. next book. So. So I again, I've enjoyed the story. I enjoyed the way he portrays Silver Surfer. Um, Donnie Cates? Did I say Donnie Coates? Yes, you Jesus did. Christ, I cannot get his I name thought right. you were, I thought Donnie you were, This is like Coates. another Miracle Man. Don, it is, it is. I can never say Miracle Man or Mr. Miracle properly. I always confuse You always them. reverse them. Mr. Firestar, Mr. But the funny Miracle part is Man. you always reverse them. Firestar and Starfire, I always reverse <laughs> yeah. them every single time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were like joking, and I no. was like, all right. Donnie, no, no, I was joking originally. Joke. <laughs> I'm like, what, all right, whatever, no, I'll roll with it. I was joking originally. Toby, are Donnie you rolling with it over Coates. there, buddy? Cates, Donnie Cates, just... <laughs> Donnie Cates. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So, so oh, that I, Coates. That's one that I was not it's sure Tom anybody Tom mentioned. Hussey. I don't know either. My, Brock, Brock, my, toss a pick. Toss a what? Toss, toss a pick. pick. What's out there? Yeah. What we'll we'll, we'll do. But now we'll we'll, yeah, we'll back reverse. reverse. So what, what do you got on your list, buddy? Oh, yeah. we're going backwards now. Now we're yeah, yeah, going do backwards. It. What is your next pick of 2019, Brock? Pick of 2019, your favorite comics that came out this year. You can continue um, repeating me to draw it out as long as you want. <laughs> or you can look at your wonderful list I know you made. No, I didn't write a fucking list. It's in my head. Um, <laughs> Good luck finding it. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> the kids keep drawing it, so it keeps going all over the place. <sighs> um, uh, there's actually two books I want to mention uh, in this right now, and it's because the number ones were just so good. Um, but they're newer books, and okay. so there's not very much out there. Sure. Um, which is a basket full of heads. Okay. The uh, Joe Hill, um, the first comic out of the Joe Hill stuff from DC. Uh, fantastic, just kind of horror first issue. And I'm not a huge horror fan. It, they're all um, minis, so I was just going to wait and read them all at, at the end. Yeah, um, yeah. Five and, issues, I think, six issues. Yeah, yeah five or six. Uh, but really solid, good start to something like I'm I'm, I'm hooked. Um, and the, uh, the the Far Sector book by N. N.K. Jensen. N.K. Jensen. Like, hands down, probably the best first issue of a comic I've read in a very very long time, and uh, I will I will second that. Um, no. The uh, uh, Far Sector number one was was fantastic. So um, it's but the thing is like they're brand new, yeah. right? It, so it's hard to. But you read them in twenty nineteen. Yeah, I read them in twenty nineteen. Yeah, so fair. it's yeah, like yeah. that. That's that's when I was like compiling my list in my head. It's like oh these are this is good. This, but how much is it good? Like does it have to be finished? Like so there's a lot, but. Um, uh, I think it's 2019 reading experiences okay. would be fair. Right. That, yeah, that's that helps. Um, Jamal Campbell uh, did art on um, on uh, Naomi. Yeah, and holy crap! Um, fantastic, fantastic art. Jamal and I are trying to line up an interview. Our, oh, s- our schedules are challenging. Nice, but, uh, but Far Sector and Naomi. Yep. Like what a batting average for. Just two back to back books, right? Yeah, I thought um I thought the art in Naomi was like uh, good. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But the art in Far Sector right. to me was like, whoa, whoa, okay, right. you that's the next level. Uh his art's really fantastic. And yeah, that uh so we've ta- we'll talk more about Green Lantern here in a few minutes. Um but <laughs> I have I have two I, I like my Green Lanterns two different ways. I, I, I'm okay. <laughs> like, I know these are probably the only ways they're going to ever write the characters, but I like I, I can like both versions. One, it's a solo Green Lantern off doing their own thing, no connection to the DC Universe, completely unrelated. We have two of those books right now. 
And the other is the Jeff Johns, every element of the DC Universe jammed in. Green Lanterns are at the center of everything. It's the core all coming to save the day. It's a billion characters, right? We like we have had both extremes over the last couple of years. Right now, between Morrison's and Liam Sharp's Green Lantern and Far Sector, we are at the extreme end, the Far Sector, of, of that uh, uh, take on Green Lantern, where it's the sole Green Lantern off in the middle of fucking nowhere alien world and doing their own thing. I don't need this Green Lantern to show up in the Justice League. I don't need this Green Lantern to show up on Earth. I don't need Guy Gardner to show up in this book. Well, then, I don't want that. I want this character to stay its own thing. The nice thing about the Far Sector one is that we already have um, kind of a Green Lantern character in Young Justice who's completely separate. Yeah. From the Far and, Sector one. So it's, and she, I mean, in this, she is a full-on Green Lantern as far as I know. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, we're already well past our designated two Green Lanterns of Earth, uh, up to eight now. So, <laughs> um, guess I guess those Earthlings make pretty good Green Lanterns. <laughs> I, you know, yeah, you know. Uh, yeah. even even that guy guy. But we'll we'll figure it out. But yeah, Far Sector is fantastic for first issue. I haven't read two yet, but but fantastic first issue. It's you. My yeah, turn. Sure my turn. turn. Let me get my list. Pull back out your up list. Here. I got my list. Uh, let's continue here. Uh, oh, that's, that's been done. We, I'm going to continue with, um, with some of my, my fun, my fun comics. And Deadpool number one. I said fun. Um, Jimmy Olsen is pretty fun, but I think there's one book that's more fun than Jimmy Olsen in comic books these days. I think it might have the best art in the industry today. And that's Dial H for Hero. Kevin, I'm, you read that yet? I'm, I'm not so far behind. It's that's like, a I'm that's a hardcover read for me. Yeah, I just got so far behind on that that I just so Sam Humphreys. The great covers writer. are fantastic, though. Sam Humphreys, great, great writer, right? Um, the, the story's fun, right? Uh, uh, a couple couple new kids get the H style. They're they're turning into all sorts of crazy superheroes. They're doing. You know, wacky stuff. They're trying to figure out who's behind, who's on the other side of the H dial. They, they they go back to the original guy, and he's sort of like turned into two beings. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it doesn't matter. That's not why I'm talking about this book. Why Joe, are you talking Joe, about Joe, it? Joe Kionis, the artist. All right, he can fucking mimic anyone. Mm-hmm. He has mimicked. I mean, uh, uh, the turtles, um, yep. uh, Mike Alred. Mm-hmm. Uh, fuck, uh, um, uh, Chris Ware in I think the most recent I think it was either the recent issue or two issues back there's multiple segments that are just like uh, Jimmy Corrigan he can mimic uh, Rob Liefeld uh, every and they've had other guest artists that have kind of come in to do like there was one issue that had a bunch of guest artists kind of doing their style as mm-hmm. things changed uh, so he didn't do all the art but he's done it, it was an intentional fill in for part of the story of, of different artists working on it um uh, he he's done like Frank Miller, like Dark Knight style. Mm-hmm. He can mimic anyone. It is out of this world. Um, you may not care about Dial H. You may not care about the story or the characters, but it just his regular quote unquote regular art throughout the course of the series is also just just so good. But the fact that he is able to go in and mimic like way way closer than I think anyone else possibly can uh, all these art styles. Uh, he even did an issue of uh, uh, mimicking uh, Nancy, the new Nancy um, uh, comic strip. Right? Uh, it is it is wild how good he is at doing this. Uh, to me, it's I think it's the best art uh, on the on the stand these days, as far as like what he's able to do artistically within this book to just be weird the range and crazy. The, the range is yeah. like. The sketchiness of the turtles in the last issue, it looks just like the Eastman and Laird stuff, like the original original black and white stuff. It's crazy how good it is. Even the lettering is done the same. Oh, it's it is it's a very, very funny book too. Uh but I I I, I cannot recommend Dial H, especially if you're an art person and you like they're not going for a lot of like the big flashy kind of like Maybe he did like a Jim Lee kind of parody. I can't remember. But if you like, especially more the ind- independent underground, weirder mm-hmm. type of art styles, he he does an incredible job mimicking that stuff. I, I yeah, highly recommend it. Very very fun book too. So it's a, it's very quirky. Mm-hmm. Kevin, um, 
So I'm going to pick a book that ended this year. Okay. And it's also a bit of Comics Conspiracy podcast trivia because the first episode I was ever on, one of the news stories was the announcement of this oh. title. Doomsday Clock? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh, are you going to want to step out? Because we're going to talk – our final book of the night is Doomsday Clock. I, I could not put that on my list because I refuse to because it's been in three years. <laughs> Almost four? <laughs> and it's not an ongoing title. <laughs> doesn't have to be ongoing. This no. is um, Paper Girls. Yeah. Oh. Um, and – just wrapped up? Yeah. Wrapped up maybe two months ago, I want to say. Um, anyway, Brian K. Vaughn, Cliff Chang. The bo- the word that comes to mind, Ryan, you said fun for um, Jimmy and uh, Dial H. Another word that comes to mind for this book is consistent in that it's always been good. I don't think it's reached the highs of something like Saga, but it's always been good both in story and art. And what I thought was go- was when it first started going was something like Stand By Me or The Goonies has mm-hmm. turned into a crazy, almost like a Silver Age DC, almost science fiction odyssey story that's yeah. just pulling out. And I'm saying this next part is a compliment. It's like sitting around with your friends at age 10 and just pulling out <laughs> everything out of your imagination you can possibly think of and throwing it in. I never knew where the book was going. And... The last issue, with no spoilers for those who aren't caught up or have not read any of it, the last issue is maybe the most quote-unquote normal issue since number one, Hmm. and I found it incredibly satisfying and moving, and just the way they brought it in for the landing was just beautiful. So Paper Girls is... Did you, were you reading floppy or trade? Floppy. Floppy, because I, I, they lost me at trade two. Okay. <laughs> so, which is, I, what, five trades ago? I, I've read probably about the same amount. I really liked it. It is... It was good. Like many things on my giant list to finish yeah. up. At Cliff Chang's art, so good. Yeah. Like, yeah so good. No, I loved it when I was reading it, and I don't know... It's one of those things, it just... There's only so many things you can read. Yeah. yeah. I think you can read most of them and just... <laughs> Better allocate my free time. <laughs> you got a nice little stack back here for you, too. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah. I was at one was time... one of my picks last year. I was all in for years and years and years, and mm. then all out, and then in and out, and uh, Superior Spider-Man came in, and that was pretty good, And the, but the new run... Especially earlier this year with The Hunted. I really liked that storyline. And then you dip in and out, and it has some of the fun aspects of Spider Man that you want because he's living with Boomerang. And you're, I mean, that was really enjoyable. Towards the end of the year, uh, I'm a little bit behind with the right after the Maximum Carnage tie ins. So that was like, no, whatever it is. It's well, carnage. Now, now it's all twenty ninety nine. All twenty nine ninety. That's when I stopped. So that was November, late November. So, but from the new year in, the hunted was a really. I really liked the storyline. I liked the. It just it kind of brought Peter back to being Spider Man, and it wasn't global. It was it was written well. I really like Dan Slott's run. Right? Yeah, For all his his various incarnations. But there was one thing that I think they did in that run as it went on was Peter just got too big between Spider Verse and him taking over. Like he because it became like you know Zuckerberg, yeah. And it, the story just got out of control. And this was, to me a and, little bit. And this was smaller. This again. is a way smaller. And that's that's Spider Man, right? That's why it's Sp- on my list. Spider Verse is cool. I like Spider Verse. Right? right again, I like the two extremes. Right. I've had enough of Spider Verse. Give me no. We want we want Peter yeah. Parker Spider. We want right. the friendly neighborhood Spider Man. Right. Back. Exactly. Exactly. And I think I, that's what well, I think what that's. I think that's. I mean, well, I'm sure we'll talk about Far From Home a little bit uh, in, in the movie episode. But one of the things that worked for me so well about the MCU Spider Man stories is that, like, oh, it's it's Mysterio from the multiverse. No, no, it, no, no, it's not. It's, it's just, just, it's just it's some dude. It's just some dude. Right. Right. And that's why I was so happy that that's how that turned out because I'm, I don't need in Avengers. I love Spider-Man going out in the space and fighting Thanos, but I don't need that in the Spider-Man movie. No, right? we want spy. I mean, again, it's, I don't know if that, that's just the way it is for me. Uh, yeah. So the last year was spider was last year was spider verse. Was that yeah. two years ago? That's 2018. That yeah. was not on my list last oh, year. Oh, co- Comic or movie? 
Uh, the comic? comic? No, that would have been two, three, two, years, three ago. years ago. Like the original Spider Verse? Yeah, it was 2016, 2017. Maybe? Yeah. It was before, it was before Nick Spencer's one. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So, again, the, the current run, I. I just the way I like the way it's written. I do like I like the art. Mm-hmm. Um, it just it just it just feels like <laughs> Spider Man to me. And that's whenever it does. Whenever Spider Man goes back to this that that kind of grounded feel, as long as it's written well, yep, it's it's usually one of my favorite books. It's one of the very few books that I'm fairly caught up in. Yeah. I mean, I, in my saver box, I might have the 2099 one back there. And, and, and if you're a uh, <laughs> and if you're a comic conspiracy uh, podcast uh, listener, and you haven't joined the Facebook group, you can uh, see Scott's uh, CGC collection that he posted over on the group the other day. Oh, inclu- I did, including your Amazing cool. Fantasy 15. Somebody posted that. Did you see the the? The did, fucking Legion? You, did you see that? Goddamn. So, that better be wrapped and sitting in your car with a, with a sticker that says <laughs> 2 Ryan on it. Or... I almost threw up buying that one. That one was pretty expensive. So He bought he bought the first Legion. Did you see that? So no, I did not it see is, it. It uh, is Adventure Comics number 247. It's the, the latest edition. The Superboy to... with the three yeah, sitting the, around. Yeah, the... no, no, yeah. no. And they don't okay. want Superboy in the Legion. What yeah, an asshole. That was... <laughs> It's waving well, that in my face. There, I only need two DC comics for my Mar- Martian Manhunter and no, no, for my Silver Age collection on the DC side to be done, and that's Showcase Four, which yeah, we all know is the Grail of all Grails in the Silver Age, and then uh, Barry Allen Flash, and I guess the other one's kind of golden. It's a golden. Is it the Martian Manhunter? No, no, I have that one. Oh, you did get it. Okay. Um, it's uh, Adventure to Ten, which I guess is pretty much probably considered golden, What's and that's the first ten? crypto. Oh, nice. Which I thought was cool. cool. I don't have that one yet, so I'm looking for those two. And then on the Marvel side, there's a few that I'm looking for. I got a super low grade uh, first Mon L. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just super, just kind of a placeholder. Because I, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm eyeballing me, some of those early Somebody asked me randomly, issues. and and then uh, somebody that, here. Oh, here comes Lane. And then somebody knew that I had. They're like, they're like. So, what do you do with those comic books? Do you look at them? And I was like, I roll around on them naked on the floor. I'm like, I kind of, <laughs> li- I wish I could see them more. So I'm like, you know what? I'll set them up, and you couldn't even see my first appearance, Iron Man, back in the back, <laughs> like Tales of Suspense thirty nine. That was back there. It's all fuzzy. Lane, you got some favorite comics of twenty nineteen? You want to talk about? Come or you sit gotta, over here. You hang out for the movie. Okay, well, 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 well you, you got time. You got time. We're gonna we're we're go, we're gonna finish our circle. You got you got. Plans. But yeah, Amazing Spider Man this year. I was really yeah. as I went back to look at all the comic books, especially the ones that I had read fairly consistently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that was one of the keys. If it was consistent, uh, I, it was on my list. Cool. And consistent and good. That's why Doomsday Clock is not on my list because <sighs> it was not consistent. Good, but not consistent. Yeah. Well, why don't we do one more each? Uh, we'll give Lane a chance to have a few, and then we're going to talk Doomsday Clock. So uh, if you guys want to step out while me, Kevin, and Brock talk for a little bit, we are going to spoil everything. So Not only can you spoil it, but I'll probably be ex- more excited to read it. <laughs> and then be- uh, Lane, Snyder's- we'll, we'll let you we'll let you have a few have a few picks at the very end, okay? Um, we'll, we'll finish our, our 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 list and then and then you can look, talk. Yeah. Lane's even actually written stuff down, unlike Brock. <laughs> yeah, like on a notebook. It's all like, scrambled in his head. Well, it's in Brock's head. <laughs> so, yeah, that's where I have to keep most of my stuff. Uh, my kids would eat my papers. In my um, head, in I, I think uh, head. you're talking about consistency. And R.I.P. Really Dolores. Solid, Is it Dolores? A solid yeah. title. Yeah, R.I.P. Um, is a uh, Justice League from Scott Snyder and occasionally with uh, James Tyrion the Fourth. Yeah, like yeah. that has been a just a fun, crazy ride of um, just I, I, the amount of stuff coming out of it. I'm just like it, I described it as an ongoing crisis on Infinite Earths comic book. Yeah, it's a little depressing to me that that people seem to have kind of dropped off the book. It's been the last six issues or so. We're getting into like. It's all been building to this, basically, yeah. right? But the thing is, is the amount of stuff that's been coming out of this. We had Batman Who Laughs that came out of this. We had Batman Superman that came out of yep. this. We've had, you know, the Tales of the Dark Multiverse books, which are amazing. They're really good. Like, if, just good, solid one-shots. Um, we're into Infected now. Hell Arisen is coming out. Like, 
There is and, so and, much. And this that, is, Hell of Risen is lead. I mean, I, I get. I don't know what it's leading to, but it is leading directly into the next event. Yeah. So. And the thing is, is like there is just so much that Justice League has has you know started for mm. DC in this past year that's just really solid. That it, yeah, it, it's just been a good, good book. Well, Justice League right. too. Um, again, I don't want to go on too too much about this, but Doomsday Clock, right? The tie-in between Justice League and Doomsday Clock is actually more than we th- more than we knew, mm-hmm. all right. Especially with this last issue, so uh, mm-hmm. I want to. Uh, uh, Justice League is you. You are not reading if you are not reading Justice League and you're a big DC fan, you are missing out. The book. Yep. I, I'm not going to lie. The book was kind of like been buying it or reading it because I bought it all. Oh, well, buying it's fine. <laughs> the, it is a little all over the place at first. The, I've, I've been reading. It was it. a. It was kind of like the Morrison run, but a little less focused. I, and I don't mean that in a bad way. It was just I wasn't quite sure where they were going. Well, we the, now know where yeah. they're going. Well, we came. Awesome. The, the thing is, is we came out of metal into No Justice. Yeah. And from No Justice, we came into Justice League, yeah. and. Justice League gave us, and this—I mean, this stuff is last year, granted. Mm-hmm. Um, but last year it gave us kind of this something. Something old is now stirring, right? Mm-hmm. And that's kind of why we get this back and forth. I mean, ever, the issue thirteen with just the Joker issue—that's oh, great. That was a great yeah. just issue. Um, but going forward, it's like all of these threads are going along and stuff like that, and then now they're all kind of coming together and. Yeah. Just the app, like what's come out of it has been, and like I said, leading into whatever the next big yeah. event is, and 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 kind of retweaking the universe a little bit. Back with the Legion and JSA or um, uh, Command D and the JSA, yep. uh, it's been just been awesome. Yep. So I have uh, there's a couple more here. You taking Green Lantern or take am I it, taking your Green take Lantern? It, okay, it. okay. Because there's a couple other things I wanted to talk about, of course. You know, I mean, I, I would love to talk more about Hawkman, another mm-hmm. Robert Vendetti book that I, I really enjoyed. Um, uh, the main Superman title and, and Legion, obviously, Bendis has been, has been killing it. But come on, son. <laughs> Morrison and Liam Sharp on Green Lantern. What a What a book. What the I weird? Think, I think the weirdest book of 2019, yeah. just hands down. But I'm going to say this is the record for the most number of Facebook messages I have sent you. <laughs> About, have you have you read Green Lantern yet? Yeah, and, then, every issue. and then Ryan replies like four days later. I just I read just it. read it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> it's always like I read it like Thursday or Friday yeah, morning or yeah. something like that afterward. It, okay. I have no idea what's going on at the Green Lantern. But I'm, yeah. I'm just gonna. Yeah. I'm just gonna be. I mean, yeah. I tried. I it, dropped. It, it, I so my my reading of 2000 AD has been very minimal. So wait a second, years, right? This is a Ryan Higgins hot take plus read Green Lantern for Green Lantern. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, what, what do you ask? Just check. This is one of your favorite comic books. Of one the of year. my favorite comics of the year, and you don't know what's going on. No, just checking. 2000 AD. I, right. I look at Kevin. So Kevin Kevin's knows like, where I'm going. He's with like, this. don't worry about it. I think I know where he's going with okay. this. There is something. So I've read minimal amounts of 2080, right? Same through the years, especially the old stuff. Um, but this couple of the stories I have read, some of Judge Dredd, some of the random stories have been collected in other formats. Um, oh, Toby's up. Um, there is a rawness to that book. That just is kind of lacking in most American comics, especially American superhero comics. So you see a little bit in independent books, but there's just such a there's a there's a you're it's not, not su- Don Stars. That you're just not su- makes you happy. You're not supposed to, I think, really know what's going on. You're just supposed to kind of be along for the ride for some of that real early 2000 AD, that very British European uh, UK style uh, style of writing. And Morrison comes from that, right? Um, Green Lantern is as close as I've felt to those in a like kind of traditional DC comic. Like I said before, we're talking about Far Sector. He throws you in the deep end. He does not explain anything. He's never going to explain anything. You're not supposed to understand what a lot of the big parts of this book is. If you've read this fucking weird-ass random Golden Age Green Lantern book, you'll understand. But if you haven't, it doesn't matter, right? Um, There are references that he understands, but they don't affect the story. You just go along with it. It's a little bit like uh, R.I.P. and the and the Batman of Zero and R. All that storyline, you get an extra level out of it if you're like, oh, I've read the original Zero and R story from the fifties, and I kind of know where this is coming from. But if you don't, it's 
it's still just a really cool, weird Morrison book. Liam Sharp's art is, I mean, I mean, his Wonder Woman stuff was good. This stuff is on another level. It's the craziest, weirdest, kind of dirtiest book I've seen him do in a like maybe not since like that like that Marvel UK stuff. Remember, like he did a bunch of that Marvel UK, and again, it had that that gritty like 2000 AD sort of sort of black and white feel to it. This is as close as I think I've seen his art come to that in in forever. Uh, some of those covers, that Adam Strange cover is one of my favorite covers of all time. It this isn't what Adam Strange looks like. This isn't what any of those characters look like, but it's so good. He's got it's for Toby a little bit of that uh, that quietly like bubble bubbliness in his in his art, like lots of just like ripples and muscles on muscles and huh? No, not wrinkles. Just it, it's so overly alien uh even as human characters and it's it's such a good good book i've never it's like easily one of my favorite books of all time of being totally confused and just being like i'm just here to see where the hell he's going could, with this could i jump on the end of this and ask yeah. if you agree with this yeah of course I understand what's going on panel to panel and page to page. Sure. I do not understand the overarching story. It, yeah, every issue, yeah, it, Scott's grabbed the, the Green Arrow, Green Lantern team up. It, yeah, right, right. Every issue feels standalone, and there's also a bigger story behind it that I fully admit I'm a little lost yeah, yeah. on, but that's Morrison. It just all wraps up at the end, right? So the, the miniseries they're doing right Wait, now. There's no uh, Wikipedia page for you to read. Uh, oh, I'm sure there is. I mean, pe- I remember. Pe- I remember Final Crisis. You were like pe- people much smarter oh, than me. Final are, Crisis is at a whole other level than this. Yeah, pe- people much smarter than me have already written up all the all the think pieces on this book. I just haven't read them yet. Um, but it is just raw, weird uh, Morrison space space mm-hmm. Morrison, which he doesn't get to play around with t- too much. Not as much as as I would like. Uh, yeah, Green Lantern. Walk and the second second uh, hardcover came out today, so you can read the whole first uh, first arc in, in hardcover or the first soft and second hardcover if you would like to get the collected editions. Well, before we hand the baton off to Lane, yeah, Lane's I'm going to throw books. some red meat to the Morrison haters <laughs> because I'm going to pick a Morrison book as well. Oh, look at that! And this is reading experience of something released in 2019, right? Yeah, yeah. The Absolute Arkham Asylum book mm, yeah, yep, is right. my pick. I love that comic. That's the first time I ever met Morrison was on his original signing tour for that book. This is the Dave McKean went back and my track record with recolored art is yeah, spotty. Yeah. Very spotty's a kind way of saying yeah, it. Yeah. But this is I want to I want to see the interiors. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, oh, I should have brought it. You yeah, should yeah. Oh, I just – it was such a pleasure to wander through those pages again like I was reading it for the first time. And a special shout-out here to uh, – there's an essay in the in the hardcover about by McKean about what he did to the art. The Joker's dialogue in this book has always been written with red lettering on a white drop. Yeah. So it looks like a white outline of red lettering. It – I found it impossible to read yeah, yeah, yeah. in every edition until this one. For the first time since 1989, which is when that <laughs> book came out, I could read the Joker's dialogue. Nice. And that was cause for celebration. But I love that book. The Morrison haters, who you hear his name, and the, the Spears come out. Oh, Arkham Asylum is... I think it's masterful. It's one of his... I mean, as, as crazy as it is, it's one of his more accessible works. And it's not Earth One regular batman it's a and he acknowledges this it's not it's not meant to be taken as a literal batman story it's a it's full of symbol and allegory and it's it's you're just it's batman as a vehicle for exploring themes that are interesting to him without trying to cram those into the monthly batman title Mm -hmm. i love that book and this edition if you're at all a fan the absolute arkham asylum is Gorgeous. Well, and, and Dan McKeon's uh, interior artwork is like this, uh, cages. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, big, that's, big numbers. Yeah, that's the end, <laughs> yeah. right? I yeah. mean, he does not do interior yeah. art. Uh, so, I mean, 
what was the recoloring like? Just cleaning up and kind of. Well, and a lot of the what he talks about is the the printing processes that they had originally. Right. right. First, now. he was limited on what he could do and things that he thought would look cool when he saw them printed. He said that didn't turn out how I wanted it to. Okay. Okay. But now with the advance in technology, if I do the same thing again. Wow, look how different it looks. Okay, okay. yeah, I, I want to see the comparisons. Yeah. Because a, a big thing with McKeon is is like multimedia, and I don't know how much mixed media, or uh, sorry, not multimedia, mixed media. Yeah. I don't know how much mixed media he used in Arkham Asylum, if any, but um, like his Sandman covers were three dimensional, right? Yeah. I mean, and they were yeah. their physical constructs that he, he made. So I don't know how much of that he added to the, to the covers of, um, or to the interior on uh, Arkham Asylum, if any, but. I'm sure just a a, a more high res modern yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 scans would do would do wonders for for his for his art. I will uh, bring it in next time. Yeah, I'll take a look at it. Lane, thank you for joining us. Uh, Yellow Mike should be should be good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You got some comments for 2019. You missed you missed our our kind of full list here, but feel free to talk about whatever you would like. We'll give you the floor for as long as you want. It's okay, I'll correct all your lists now. <laughs> Oh, it, 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 Scott, you didn't really get to finish talking about Wildstorm. I'm sure Lane may have some words about that. I, oh, yeah. Did, I loved it. I loved just the new take on characters, how characters were in different spots. Uh, talking about a book that um, I just didn't understand, but I still enjoyed. <laughs> oh, yeah. I read it every month. And I was like, this is what? cool. What, what happened? <laughs> They're like, I don't understand why these people are here. Weren't those guys friends? And I'm like, yeah, at one point those guys probably were, but this is just mm-hmm. this is how they're doing it. And maybe they're on a different side. and. As most they, of it was on. Most the of it same was sides. pretty tracked. Yeah. Was tracked pretty well. Um, but when they, I felt like they did a very elegant job of putting all of the characters mm-hmm. into place. Like, I mean, the original backlash and the backlash in this story a little bit different. I mean, that the, was probably the biggest surprise. That was the biggest surprise. He's not owned by Wildstorm, right? So you're like, okay, well, now, and he's freaking crazy now. Yeah. So it, that was the biggest surprise as a character that I collected way back in the day. But mm-hmm. I just well, he actually went crazy in one of the Wildstorm books too. Yeah, it was a little later though. Yeah. Um, but I really liked the way that they kind of meshed it and put it together and mm-hmm. and told that story and the the political the political pull between you got to hear it again from a different angle. Yeah, you know, if anything I was. They didn't really go into the Team Seven stuff, which yeah. I thought they would. But yeah, I did okay. too. I, I mean, I wasn't sure if I missed stuff the last. I haven't read like I'm behind about a month yeah. and a half. So, well, it's been over for a month. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Four months. It's been over. I mean, basically, Team Seven was Project Thunderfoot. Right. So it's just they didn't. They just kind of glossed over. And then the other one I was missing was Planetary. But that's right, and you're wondering, why. and you're wondering if they're just going to kind of do something else at some point. Everything yeah, well, I figured kind of they would probably talk more about it in the yeah. individual series. Like they're supposed to be the Wildcats series, right. and I don't. There was talk of a second series. I don't know what it was supposed to be besides the Michael Cray book. Um, yeah, I don't remember. But yeah, they're just it, well, was, there were supposed to be four books, yeah, right? And that the two are. didn't happen. No. Yeah, so and then Wildstorm or Wildcats got solicited, and then that Pushed didn't back, yeah. happen. <laughs> Pushed back indefinitely. Yeah. Oops. Because the Michael Cray book actually worked really well with the Wildstorm book as well. Yeah. Because it helped explore the similar concepts of of that other Wildstorm universe, but then they just kind of went a little further and kind of went against like a really whacked up Justice League. Right, right. But how, awesome. how do you feel Wildstorm stands compared to like the original Wildcat stuff, and, and especially Ellis's like original run? Do you feel like it stands up to it? Because I've read most of it, and I feel like they're they're the similar characters, but wildly different books. Yeah, their motivations change. They're a lot more extreme in this version. Yeah, like, they're all um, very Ellis Ellisy. Yes, exactly. <laughs> there's, there's always that. You have the grumpy old man in every group. Yeah. Uh, and you have the rebel girl in every group. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the the yeah. typical Alice. I like the new Je- uh, uh, Jenny Sparks. I thought that she was she was cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I thought she was a little better in the current in the, version. I mean, the the original version. Yeah, Sorry, but so. no, I, I, I like the new the new take on her. She, I just cool. like I with characters like these, which don't appear too often, and there's not so much. They're not tied down to Amazing Spider-Man. If you would have completely changed him or changed him a little bit, people freak out. Yeah, um, you can you can shift yeah. some of these characters around slightly 
to you know meet a modern need and it's not nobody i mean i loved it yeah yeah, yeah. so i really loved it that's all, yeah it's in my top t- I don't know top five whatever for this year. <laughs> There's no top. Just just yeah. yeah. Just I give mean, us your favorites. And then like if anything, the only thing I was hoping they would talk about was the um, the I forget what they call it, the Century Babies in that series. I know you guys probably don't know what that's about, but like yes, no, they yeah, that it's didn't. something that Ellis seeded throughout all his books, like from Stormwatch all the way through to Planetary through Authority, but he never really finalized a yeah. story arc with it like they kind of hinted well, it's supposed at to be it. like the next jenny sparks right, right. I mean, jenny is essentially no, jenny baby. yeah well jenny already died in, in yeah. the original she died and turned into jenny quantum right right um but it's the idea well he hinted that the idea that the the century babies were all there as defense mechanisms against the, um the that century's whatever bad things yeah yeah so there were what seven babies so far that were defined, but we never got to see them besides their own books. Mm. But that's they didn't touch on separate. that, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. So basically, whilst I'm really good, what the heck's going on? <laughs> yeah, you kind of have to know whilst I'm really appreciated. I think. Yeah, you would. I mean, and I don't think so. I know a little, but knowing the characters and knowing, so at times you have to think back. You're like, okay, well, this this character is in this spot. Okay, they're slightly shifted over and in, mm-hmm. into this spot, but it's not a huge departure. It's just over. Yeah. If anything, the biggest thing would be that, like the wall cats, were in direct, like public view and were mm-hmm. in contention with against like you had IO Stormwatch, all the groups all fighting each other straight up. And which, this is all underground. I mean, everybody's fighting everybody else on the spy. Yeah. You know, they're all. I mean, it's you know. Who who attacked us again? Wait, was this them? This could have been them. Could have been this guy. So everybody's fighting each other, and they don't know yeah. who they're fighting against. Oh, and the biggest interesting thing twist was that the Daemonites had already lost. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that was an interesting twist. But um, what else you got, Lane? I'm sure these are probably all the same as everybody else already mentioned. That's all right. Yeah, like, get out. Uh, probably. Well. The only thing out of Marvel would be Hawks and Pox. Yep. Uh, just because Scott had a few from Marvel. I did. All mine were Marvel. Was, you know, it was, it was thought provoking. It got yeah. people to talk about the books again, and it was inter- And the art was amazing. Yeah. Um, out of DC, there was for me. Um, uh, besides Wellstorm, um, well, Tom King's Batman. Uh, and we're so close to wrapping that up too, and it's been amazing all the way to the end. Yeah. Um, and then Doomsday Clock, of course. Uh, well, almost, I put it there uh, because I think oh. the best issues have been this year, really. We're going to talk about 12. Do you want to... Almost amazing to the end. Do you want to step <laughs> for out uh, with Scott while we talk about I mean, it? I, I don't really care about it. I, I'll, I'll hang out, but I mean, I just won't <laughs> you'll, say well, anything you'll pretend I don't know to anything not. about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I would say another book that's closing up is East to West. That's and the up. last issue, right? They're just dumping the last issue mm-hmm. next week. I don't is know. Is that the final uh, one? I think so. Because uh, yeah. I, I know I, I talked to um, the artist. He was already wrapping up the art on what, Stockton Con. Nick Dragota. Nick yeah. Dragota. Yeah. 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 It, 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 I, I, I flipped to the end. It's, it's the end. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of figured. Because, uh, yeah, he said it's 46, and it's he's, mm-hmm. it's a big – or not 46. 45, 45 right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a big issue, though. Yeah. Yeah, it's an oversized issue, and I already fl- – I flipped to the end, and it said – End. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. all right. You're like, That's okay. It. Right, it's done. I guess the only other one I had for image for this year, I really like Gideon Falls. Mm-hmm. It continues mm-hmm. to be really amazing and crazy. <laughs> I have no idea where it's going, but it's fun. <clears throat> Sorrentino's art on that, that is. So good. Oh. Yes. That's another one where I'm like, I read the first issue and I'm like, yep, I'm going to keep reading this. And now I've got like two trades sitting there waiting <laughs> for me to read. Yeah. And then I put other just. I don't know honorable mentions, which is based on yeah. art only. Not that's fine. Yeah, so whatever I, I'm talking I listed, about. Like uh, I know people had complaints, but I love the art on Heroes in Crisis. Clay Man Brock just, talk about that. Yeah, yeah. killed it in that one. And now we're All waiting for, for for Bat Cat. So <laughs> oh yeah, he's, I'm give him time, man. I'm more than happy to wait. And then I have uh, Batman Damned. It's Lieber Mayo mm-hmm. and Lieber. Well, yeah, Mayo. Le- Lieber Mayo. He's doing some variant covers for Detective coming up. They're awesome looking. Yes, yeah. If I ever meet yeah. Lieber Mayo, already. I just want him to sign to me from Lieber Mayo. Mayo. <laughs> from L-I-B-R 
dash space mayo. M-A-L-E-B-Y-O. Like mayonnaise or the mayo <laughs> as in his last name? M-A-Y-O. I still want to get a L-I-B-R. CB's Lieber. autograph as Akira. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I've been trying to get that but failed. Uh, I don't think he'll do it now. No. I don't think he I don't think he likes to talk yeah. about that anymore. And the last two for art, uh White Knight, Sean Murphy's just mm-hmm. scaling yep. in on White Knight yep. 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 on either series and then the one well, curses. The this one year. you will hate this year, but it's only because I love the art. The story was just so so. That's great. Uh Magic Order from Mark Miller. Yeah, uh, that was all over Copio. Uh, Co- Copio, yeah, yeah. yeah I actually yeah. thought that was a pretty good series. It was okay. It just it follows Miller's yeah. straightforward the, yeah. his his typical story, which is here's the big mystery. And here's the one thing I didn't tell you yet, and that's the answer, <laughs> which I don't really. I kind of. It's like it's very predictable. He's done that in the last four miniseries he's done. And but you're, but you're right about that art. Yeah, that the art was, was absolutely yeah, amazing yeah. in that series. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah, and he's killing it on the covers for for Batman and Detective, or forget which one he's doing, but or is it Justice League? I think it just. He's been Scope jumping you? around, but he's, yeah, he's, he's been, been doing, doing a bunch of different stuff. Covers. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, that's. Pretty much my list for now. I mean, for comics. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of good ones that came out this year, but those are still the tops. <laughs> well, we polled uh, the users over at our Facebook group to ask for their three favorite comics of the year, and I went through and tallied everything up. And the winner of the of our of our of big chicken dinner of our uh, podcast group's favorite comic book of 2019 goes to. House and Powers, no real surprise there. Although not, it didn't 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 crush everyone. It, it, it got a lot of votes, right? But there's a couple pretty close to it. Uh, runner up, Doomsday Clock, number two spot, of course. A lot of big Doomsday Clock fans. Uh, tied for third place is Immortal Hulk and Batman, Tom King's Batman. So, Immortal Hulk's one of those books. I read the first trade. Now I didn't mention this because this is a 2018 book. Yeah, but it's still coming out. I know, but yeah. I haven't. I only read the first trade. Yeah, I read about the first nine issues. I, I really think. enjoyed that first trade. It really yeah. reminded me of the Kirby Lee Hulk run. He was trying to do something The monster different. Hulk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah oh. I, I thought it was fine. Hulk's a tough one for me. Never been a Hulk fan. Um, I'll keep going. You know, I mean, there's, there's a couple hardcovers. That I'll, I'll burn through them at some point. Uh, a couple other books with a, uh, a decent amount of votes here. Of course, Daredevil from Marvel, uh, the current series. Now, I'm only, I only read the first two or three. Zdarsky's pumping that book out, but I really liked it. Uh, Justice League and Jimmy Olsen both got a number of votes, so that's good to see. Uh, indie side. Now, in, obviously, the indie books are unlikely to get as many votes as some of the Marvel and DC stuff uh, from our group. However, a number of books did get multiple votes. Uh, Mighty more from Power Rangers. A lot of fans of that on the podcast forum. Um, and I, I understand, like, the current Power Ranger stuff has been really good. Um, Toby, your hardcovers are sitting over there, by the way, too. Uh, Black Hammer, Gideon Falls, and Criminal all got a bunch of votes. So no, shouldn't not be a lot of surprise there. A lot of Jeff Lemire love there, and uh, and, and obviously Brubaker. Uh, but the number one independent book, as far as votes goes, is uh, Die by by Image. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's um, another one. That? Not it's, it was it's, good. It's good. Uh, look, when you, someone describes a book to me as goth Jumanji, I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> okay, so. It's the again. We're just but you got to throw some D and D in there. It's not. I, I mean, this is just how it was described yeah, to me. Okay? But I mean, so. I would say goth <laughs> Jumanji via Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> so That's terrible. So uh, this is these are some of the uh, uh, lists. Whoops, sorry, I closed my thing uh, from our from our listeners. So thank you guys all very much for your um, for for giving us your list. I had thought I had a couple here on Twitter. Um, House of X two for the best single issue. Uh, that's that uh, that conquistador on Twitter said that. Uh, I had a couple. I had a couple notes on here, but I seem to have missed uh, placed them. Oh, Ulysses, always one of our favorite uh, 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 Twitter um, repliers. His best comics for the year: Batman, Daredevil, Doomsday Clock, Justice League, and Last Night. Mm-hmm. So it's. Uh, Going along a lot with uh, uh, other votes from from us, uh, definitely a lot of people uh, uh, liking those books. And yeah, dark, uh, last night I don't think got enough, um, got quite enough uh, uh, love in the podcast. I want well, I need to read three this week to really see where well, it wraps up. I, I think what it is is the like the amount of black label books that we got this year. That you know people are kind of just still 
feeling out, yep. um, you know, with Harleen and Joker Harley and um, Joker and the question. And I mean, this week we're getting the Dead Earth Wonder Woman one. Yep. We yep. had the Superman year one. Like, yep. um, technically, last night is a black label book. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. there's a lot. You have what? Um, the Last God. Yeah, it's very, very neat like, stuff. So, like, there's a lot of stuff from Black Label, and I think people are still assessing mm-hmm. those books for. And, and I mean, a lot of people take last crew, the last night and just tack it on to yep. the end of of Batman New Fifty Two. So, I'm going to read a couple. We asked for some longer form reviews here too. I'm going to read a few here. Uh, long time Twitter friend. You asked Jim. for that? Yeah, on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, long time Twitter friend. I think that's a good idea. Jim says, The Hard Tomorrow by Eleanor Davis is the scariest comic I've read this year. Also beautiful, really good stuff. I haven't heard of it, but uh, I'm going to check it out. Um, Alex McCready, uh, Zdarsky's Marvel Year as a whole has been great. Life Story is a fantastic reimagining of Peter Parker's life with real-time age progression. Daredevil is real good, and I liked Invaders despite not liking Namor. I really like the Invaders book, too. Invaders have been really I, fun. The Spider-Man Life Story is my my blind spot regret from this year. Yeah, I definitely want to read that. Again, it was a mini series, so I was like, cool, I'll read it when it's all done. Yeah. So it's in the giant pile. Um, By the way, I just looked at the giant pile of comics that is from like the last two years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That makes me sad. Uh, Alex McCready says, uh, Batman, what needs to be said, the best two, the best big two book over the past three years continues to grow in a natural and fantastic progression as we make our way towards the finish line with very few hiccups. Also, Ghost Tree. Uh, that's um, oh, that's, um, that's IDW. IDW. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, is a great sad book using ghosts as stand-in for having to come to peace with your past and how your life has been. Is a great move. And the ending caught me so off guard. I thought about it for days afterwards. The most underappreciated book of 2019 for me. They just came out with a collection of that. Yeah, yeah. It looks beautiful. Uh, I, that's one day. Uh, Jesse wrote a number <laughs> of. Uh, it's retirement, uh, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Je- Jesse uh, here wrote a number of reviews. I read a few of them here. He says, Batman, we could talk praises of Tom King all day, from, but from the bottom of my heart, this run has helped me through trauma. It's made me a better writer. It's made me a better fan. I'm planning on doing an arc for arc write-up after it's all done just to point out his impact. Nice. Uh, he says, Once a Future King has been the independent action book I've missed since Invincible ended. Uh, everything about this book makes me smile, and I want to see it get adapted one day. And uh, lastly, Gideon Falls has consistently been super fascinating and terrifying. This team has been killing it with each issue and has kept me on the edge of my seat with every page. Can't wait to see where else it goes. So, And he also had a lot of praise for all the Black Label stuff from, from DC, like we were just talking about. Um, so, there's there's something that we, that we probably don't touch on very much on the podcast um, just because it's not necessarily aimed at, at uh, the age group that we represent here. Um, but this year I've read a lot of the, uh, the DC Inc., Books, mm-hmm. which are basically yep. the, the the teen books, which the label's going away, um, but but the books are continuing. The, the books are continuing, yeah. and man, that stuff they have ha, the, coming out, like the Catwoman uh, oh, really the, the tale, was really good. Raven was fantastic. The best one of the year, though, was that Harley Quinn Breaking Glass. Yeah, I heard like, that was really that good. That one was uh, just was it Steve Plu? Mm-hmm. Plu is art is just top notch. I can't remember who writes it for the life of me. Um, uh, I think she wrote Mar- Montress. Miranda. No, it doesn't, isn't the lady that writes Montress? Montress. Marjorie Lou. Marjorie Lou. Yeah. No, that's Monstrous. No, yeah, I don't think that's her. She wrote one of them. I can't Wasn't remember that, which one. Uh, Tamaki, maybe. Yeah, that, that's it. That's it. Yeah, Tamaki. So um, Mariko Tamaki. Mariko Tamaki. Yeah, she wrote yeah. the Supergirl being the, super, being super, yeah. which was fantastic as well. Um, but yeah, a lot of the YA stuff that Disney's been coming out, or sorry, <coughs> DC's been coming out with has been really, really great. Um, and, you know, we've talked about Scholastic's impact uh, in the graphic novels just with, um, what's her name? I can never remember her name with Smile and Guts and... Uh, oh, Raina. Uh, uh, yeah, Raina yeah. Tuckelman. Yeah. yeah. Um, sorry, I'm not... I knew what you were saying. I just I yeah. wasn't clicking what you were, trying, what you were asking. <laughs> um, but I think there's a, like, it, it, there's a lot of content that we kind of kind of gets gleamed you know we kind of ignore because it's not necessarily a adult or modern superhero kind of deal yeah. so um another one i read this year was uh spill zone 
Where was all this when we were doing the whole rest of the episode? <laughs> you know, I, it's there. I'm just talking about what, yeah, like, talk one about this stuff. That was the whole point of this episode. <laughs> it's well, like we waited until the last thing to say, was, oh, yeah, by the way, this is this. Is the other 18 is, books I read this year that nice I like. And pleasant. Do you know how many books I read this year? Yeah. Like, there's so many. Anyway, Rock, go ahead. That was actually something that was actually f- thoughtful out of your head. Yes, I mean, no, of, of course. Happens. Okay, look. I'm not making fun of you. I'm just like, remember, this is the point of this episode. Remember, though, well, we were doing a round this, is table. What, this is what he put it. Put, this is how his head works. All of a sudden, he made a connection <laughs> in that scrambled brain with his kids going, Dad, Dad, yeah, Dad, Dad. Yeah, Dad. Yeah, exactly. Dad. And it cleared up for just a second. He was like, oh, yeah. And, There's you know, clarity. This this. For... Clarity, and it's uh, well-spoken, and it's very rare. Yeah. <laughs> but we were doing a round table. I'm like, all right. When we it, were done with the round table. We're done. I'm like, well, I wanted to get this in. Yeah, well, that all should have been part of the round table. another book I know that it's not – I didn't really – the art was but about the – the George Decay book. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, they Called Me Enemy. It mm-hmm. was really, really good, too. Mm-hmm. That one I, I have not yet read. I want to. So before we wrap up... That was your Bryce Larson 18 honorable <laughs> mentions. <laughs> before we wrap up... It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a whole separate we thing. We are going to talk Doomsday Clock and Doomsday Clock number 12. Now, this so is you read full this. spoilers. Yeah, I, yes. I picked up the shipment early so he you could read it. So you guys have read it already. Yes. Brock and Kevin read it. What's better? Okay, hold the on, hold comic on, hold or the on, TV hold show? On, hold on, hold on. I have We seen the TV. are going to we are going to talk and all about Doomsday Clock twelve. Way. So this is full spoilers going forward. Let's do it. So this is also going to be the end of the episode. So there's nothing more past this. So if you are checking out now, thank you. We'll mm-hmm. see you next week for our top uh, comic book movies and television shows of 2019. We'll get to that in a few minutes. We're going to check out here where Doom's at Clock 12. This is not going to be a complete dissection of the book top to bottom. We, I would love to do a Watchmen episode after a reread of the original book and a reread of Doomsday. So, Clock. in other words, never. No. <laughs> no You're no. going to put Watchmen at the top of your to read pile. I would like to reread it, especially after the show when Doomsday Clock. I would like. It's been a while since I've read a re- they don't. reread Watchmen. So. I've only read it once. We are going to talk about Doomsday Clock 12. Hey, this is an excuse for the book club again. Starting. <laughs> Now, <laughs> the book club. You know, you know, Ryan was just about to say. Ryan and just no. teared. A tear came out of his. Doomsday eyes. Clock Twelve, Scott. Uh, better than the show. I mean, it, you know what? It treads a lot of the same ground. There's, there's, it is a especially the last page. There's a ex- very similar. It's not a similar moment, but a similar tone. So spoilers for the show for people that haven't well, no, seen no, it. No, 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 no. I haven't no, seen it. No, no don't spo- spoil the show. No, spo- well, oh, not at all. Uh, I haven't been able to. Watch Brock, it yet. you're gonna get spoilers for the show in the, in the next. We episode. can't. Yeah. We can't talk about Baby well, no, Yoda then. Like, <sighs> no, we can talk about that. Um, He's in Watchmen. We, we are. I'm not going to spoil the Watchmen TV show here. Chicky Nuggets. Um, no, but that's but the next show. <laughs> the there is elements. There there are similar similar tones. Let's just put it that way. Um, Dooms at Clock Twelve. I I didn't know what to expect. I was so terrified that... Do you know why you didn't know what to expect? Because it's been so long <laughs> since the last issue came out. I didn't, didn't know if it would ship. I didn't know how Johns was going to tie this back into the DC universe, right? I didn't know where this was going to stand as part of continuity. I was convinced, you heard me say on this very same podcast, that this is not going to be any reference to anything current it's just going to be its own standalone little story there's no real way for them to tie it back in well i was fucking wrong yeah um for the first time yeah uh, uh, oh, for the first time kevin we should also related, yes for the well, related first time okay. related this episode. so i'd so the bet well i'd like to just say um formally for those who are still listening <laughs> I'd like to thank all the members of Team 2020. <laughs> that was me. I was some, involved. Yeah. Some public and some not public. <laughs> we gave it a good ride. We took it right up to the line, really, because there's no comics next week. Yep. We well, took, there, there is, but yeah, well, it would have shipped this week. Yeah, we took right. it right to the limit. That's good, good fight. Good fight. That was a good fight. Not a blowout. I, and as I said, I was totally at peace with any outcome because I get to read the comic earlier and yeah. lose the bet. <laughs> 
or I get to shame you publicly and win the bet. It's a win-win. <laughs> and still read the comments. Yeah. I would have rather it come out in 2020. <laughs> Just because, for, for that outcome? Well, yeah. We waited for long enough. What's another two weeks? So number 11 was the beginning of September yeah. of yeah. this year. Mm-hmm. That was number 11. <laughs> Where's the Marvel recap page? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, head it's over to read head over to Twitter for further on this b- this bet matter. Now back to the comic. <laughs> um, yeah, I I really well, I, I graciously accept your your your. Uh... I, I graciously acknowledge that you won this bet. There is absolutely no animus here. Was, hey, the coffee was hey, delicious. Yeah. That that beverage um, saved us at the beginning of the podcast because good. you just you couldn't it's put good. the words together. Um, wow. Doomsday Clock 12. Um, we get not only uh, let, let's ignore let's ignore the Watchmen part of this comic for now, right? Let's talk for a few minutes about about the DC part of this comic, right? Um, we get not only uh, a, a pretty 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 great Superman story at the end of the day. Some some amazing. Fights with we, Superman. We get, and, a, we get a DC Watchmen story. We get that. I guess let's put Watchmen no, aside no, for a second. No, 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 no. I know what you're saying. <laughs> I want to talk about the aside. Superman part of this. No, no. I, I'm, I get what you're saying about that. But the story that we're getting with the Superman stuff, with what's going on in the DC universe, yeah. is r- r- so reminiscent of that original Watchmen story, of the tension that was built, the political tension, the yeah. the strife, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the, you know, this. Th- this Very versus intentional. this, yeah. and the thing is, is like John's just painted that so perfectly, and it, it this issue brought it to a head just wonderfully. Yeah, n- none of this stuff has really been acknowledged outside of Doomsday Clock in any fashion, as far as I can tell. But the idea that um, he was able to introduce this whole concept of the Superman, um, it's called Project. The, no, the Superman. Superman. Uh, should buy ad hot bracking up with the issue. Um, yeah, it's the uh, the whole the whole concept of the government is creating superheroes, but it seems like they they were able to sort of pull back from a lot of that at the very end, mm. and it worked right. But you still have some ramifications. I don't know what they're going to do with Professor Stein going forward. I don't know yeah. if they're just if anyone's going to talk about um, uh, the Superman theory. If anyone's yeah, going to talk theory. about <clears throat> Firestorm at all going forward, yeah. I, I don't know. Right, but not only that, we get. Um, uh, potentially, and Scott, this is going to be a big spoiler. Um, I don't know what Bendis's plan here is, but we, we get Mom and Pa Kent back. Yeah, that's pretty. That's this. That's my Superman. Okay, I do not like Mom and Pa Kent being dead. I like them being alive in the current Superman. Agreed. Books, right. Mm, yeah. So to me, I thought Burn did it right. The first time post crisis, I think that is the mm. best. I think that is the way to do Superman, Mom Pot Camp being his kind of you know, and, and Lois obviously, but especially with John being in the picture now and what they did with the, uh, and I thought Ben just did a great job too of bringing in um, Jor El and then getting rid of him as well, yeah. right? Like I thought it worked well. Um, I don't need that character in the well, book. No. No, regular Bendis didn't bring Jorel in. It, that was um, uh, it was in he was, clock, he, was but, <clears throat> he was brought in, or it was in in Rebirth. But um, in Rebirth, Jorel was brought in by a oh god who was writing. Jurgens was writing action at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to, um, and that's where, the, or was it Tomasi? One of them brought Jorel yeah, in. Yeah. Uh, but I, 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 just what a fantastic Superman story. You get what you want in these sort of events for a little bit of time, do hickeying, right? You kind of kind of screw around and change things up a little bit, fix mistakes, fix problems, right? Johns is a master of that. But we get that page, which is, and I, I, of course, better late than never, right? A little funny, <laughs> funny little dig. Uh, the Legion and the JSA all teamed up with the Justice League. Keep going. You're, 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 mm-hmm. <clears throat> Scott's flipping. Um, you're getting there. You're getting there. Well, only um, at the kind of the. I mean, you know, the it, I mean, can we fight. can we can we take a moment to appreciate and Gigantica's is, butt in this? I mean, okay, and it is uh, it is the current <laughs> Bendes Legion. Yep. It's the Justice League JSA. Mm-hmm. It's the Johns JSA characters from pre uh, from from pre the reboot and everything like that. So it's everything mm-hmm. back, right? So. I don't know what Bendis' plan is. I'm a, he has to acknowledge this stuff, I, I would think. 
I don't see how he how he doesn't. I was wondering way back three years ago if this is an incontinuity story. Right. It, is it? I don't. I think so because this is the second part I want to talk about. The future. How intriguing are the things that they set up in this book? So I'm not going to talk about 5G. I don't want to talk about 5G because we don't know what 5G is. We don't know what's going to happen. I don't want to get bleeding cool one breath, okay? <laughs> because we still don't know. I, I mean, we don't know. We don't know what the next five years of DC is. But they, John sets up okay, so- that some, some stuff's coming, right? But then he sets up more. Yeah. You, you, oh. you clearly caught the Marvel DC crossover, Kevin. Yes. Do we is he hedging his bet? Is he is he calling him out? Is this just a fun is this just a, just a fun throwback? I mean I mean he says there's gonna be a Marvel DC crossover. Well All right. and it's the best name. Secret, Secret Crisis. Crisis. Yeah. Like just keep going. I'm here. You just keep going. Keep going. Just keep going. And I, my reading of it currently is not doing it justice, so I'm going to ha- – you <laughs> no, know what I mean? Yeah, I, yeah. This we, is we, not an in-depth read no, on my just, part. I'm going to get my sit-down in my own private, mm-hmm. quiet, and I mean, read through it again. Surprisingly enough, when you and I read it yesterday, just, nobody, nobody came, came in the in. store. Yeah, 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 it was yeah. quiet. Yeah, like it was, yeah. a, it was a good read, but we were both just – I so, need to get through but, this. But John's also sets up uh, – clear futures that he has no control over, but mm. the the – Continuing the metaverse concept of Superman being reborn and reborn yep. in different situations, in different situations that where, where his character is updated for future generations forever into infinity. Mm. It is such an amazing concept. And well, the thing is, is, he doesn't. So he, well. he not only does it in the future, he shows us that it's been done in the past. Right. Right. And like it's it's this thing that's constantly and we get a new growing. we get a new multiverse Earth out of it Earth nineteen eighty five huh huh mm-hmm. you liking that one Kevin. <laughs> You know what I really appreciate, and I, again, uh, never mind rereading twelve. You need to reread the whole, the whole thing, thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Think yeah. of how long the gaps are between yeah. issues. Yeah. I will say that uh, page twenty-two <laughs> the, and twenty-three, the, very simple. <laughs> the all black panels. You can cut, make up some time right now. Right? Yeah. Done. Yeah. Time made up. Yeah. Um, see, my concern with one of their. Okay, we're not talking about five G. Okay. I mean, you talk about it. Whatever no, no, no. you want. But I just don't, nobody don't knows know. anything. We don't know. Problem. Right? Exactly. Let me just say one thing I didn't like about the idea of it's the JSA and it's Wonder Woman and then Superman arrives in the '60s or whatever it is mm-hmm. is like he feels like he should be the first superhero, the main superhero. Well, Never mind because that's actually how it really happened. But I mean, the, the JSA is kind of locked to World War II. Yes, a little bit like Captain America, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, no, no. I'm not suggesting updating them because I much prefer them in World War II versus on the same Earth with the JLA right. in contemporary times. I just don't think that works at all because I think it makes both teams redundant to well, each other. I, I like the way John's handled the old guys, the new kids, and the JLA were the adults in the middle, right? Mm. But but what I really appreciate about this after one quick reading while Ryan sipped his Starbucks <laughs> is that. Even if Superman okay. chronologically is currently no- the first time, never mind. No, go, go, <laughs> Sorry, go. Currently, no. mind blown. Sorry, <laughs> I mean I, I, I'm in mid mid read, and he's all. I wasn't even paying attention, Kev. Go, Kev. Turn no. your, what are you talking about? Turn your go, mic- Kev. Go no, turn your microphone back on. What are you crazy? I don't go. remember what I was going to oh, say. Jesus. No, you do not. Conter- continue. You, you didn't like the fact that it was sort of oh, you've thrown him off. He's he's, he's- go. Get in there. He'll he'll come he'll come back. He'll, he's got to figure out. He's got to go back to this topic. The first mind blown was when Doctor Manhattan moves the lantern back. Yeah, I mean, I mean, so well, let's let's go to the Watchmen end of this now. And right. Kevin, you, if you got more to say, um, do we need more Watchmen stuff? Had you asked me six, uh, well, two years ago or six months ago, especially, I would have said no. But now we have the TV show, and now we have this, and both do such an amazing job of going. Look, we're not gonna screw around with the original story but look at what we can do to add on top mm-hmm. of this i mean well they tried to do that with alan the moore watchmen is stuff. wrong the alan moore fanboys that are like no one should ever touch watchmen are wrong the tv show and this are fucking amazing 
They are an amazing addition. They take the same sort of path. They end up in two different places, right? Mm. And clearly the path of going with Dr. Manhattan is sort of what does he do with his power and what happens to him later, right? We end up in very different places, but there is still a similar nature through all of this, all right? And I think this is a good story for Dr. Manhattan. He's not a good guy or a bad guy. He's simply asking the question, well, what if I do this, right? Well, and at the end of this, he goes away. Yeah, he does. Like, he's no longer... He, he, right, he... He's gone. Like, he gives up his powers like there for is, his... For the next his, his, generation. His fated son, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, is like, there is... Yeah. And this dubs tail I mean, directly back into the end of Watchmen. It picks yeah. up elements from those final, from those final, from that final issue. And uh, you and I have talked about the talked about this briefly with the five G stuff. And I know you don't want to touch on it, but I really feel that 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 five G stuff is going it is going to be really represented in what. Well, the, the, there is no, there is no. Every DC character is getting rebooted in the next year, and no original characters around it. Everyone's replaced. That's just not happening. No. Not, not for any no. sort of like. It's not going to be five years, right? We don't know what it is, so there's no point of, you know, of really arguing what may or may not happen. But I like the idea that John says, you know. In five years, yeah, there'll probably be another crisis, and we're going to mm. tweak some stuff up. And everything that happens over the next couple years, like New 52, mm. will be its own little world. All right. I like yeah. that idea. But I think – again... How's that page, Scott? Yeah. You, you, you're on <laughs> – have you gotten uh, the, the – My question the... is, did Superman, because everything has happened already, does he now remember who everybody is, where he didn't know who they were before because nothing had happened before? Yeah, like who? Like the J? Oh, you're talking about like the JSA yeah. and Legion and everything like that. I, I, that's you're assuming that's that's the, my that's assumption how, because that's the way everything else. Right? Has he would know well, that, the JSA in, in right. Justice League. Nobody knows the JSA because but cause Manhattan. In, in there, it talks. In there, it talks about how the worlds are the metaverse is is, is augmented or changed, right? But everything else kind of catches up to it. With so Manhattan shifting, shifting the, the ring back. The, ring, the lantern back. and It, it, causes, and it causes the ripple right. effect. So when we get to that moment where, you know, Superman's there and he realizes it, that's when it all comes rushing in. To Doomsday Clock, Justice League, they will all – there will be a point where these two books, the continuity is now merged between them. This – I assume this takes place after Snyder's Justice League run yeah. because – at the point with the Justice League, they've only just now met the JSA, yeah. right? Superman only met the Legion the one time. Mm -hmm. But we now have the return of Superboy. We have the return of the original Legion. Now, I mean, this just goes flies in the face of what Bendis immediately just set up in Legion, right? Uh, I don't know how you sort of square this square this peg. What's the expression? I don't know how you really make I this fit. a square peg in a um, round hole. But uh, we'll leave that to DC to figure out. But I, this gives us both, and I'm totally cool with it. Well, and, and there's so much in this issue, so much in this issue to unbox. Yeah. Um, uh, well, well, with the Legion, well, sorry, with the um, with the Watchmen end of it, right? All the characters return back to where they were. Yeah. Doctor Manhattan <laughs> go. Uh, the comedian uh, returns literally, literally yeah, yeah. back to where he was. Um, Doctor Manhattan goes off. And he's as gone as he was. He's based. It's no different than the end of the series because he's just gone, right? The uh, I'm sorry, uh, mime and marionette stay, stay here. here. Yeah, the mime so, and marionette are now in the DC universe. So again, Watchmen returns to its original form, untouched. There's nothing you can you can easily is ignore. That, is that Earth 185? No, I mean they're here. What's Earth 185? Uh, you'll, no, did you get to it yet? Yeah, it's you're on the page. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah. all the it's um, it's it's the is that the first crisis? It's the pre crisis. It's the 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 just pre crisis Justice League. It's the 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 Watchtower team. Yeah, and I don't know. Like we get or we get JSA, we get Earth One, JLA, and mm -hmm. they're calling that now just pre crisis different somehow. We don't know, right? And New Fifty Two is now officially a multiverse. It's not. The, if not the altered DC universe, right? And they're even giving it like Rebirth is like its own multiverse now, right? So <clears throat> we don't the, know when everything's going to dovetail into this, but it's... But like what I... And and this goes back to 
a book that came out in 2016. And that's Jim that. Jack Clock? No. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Kevin, what were you saying before I rudely interrupted you as my mind was blown? Come back, come back to, you're not Toby. Come back and listen to the podcast. Stop, stop, being, stop pulling a Toby. Because stop now, I, now I'm interested because I totally wasn't listening to anything you guys were saying <laughs> until that page went, and I was like, whoa. I'm not pulling a Toby. I'm eating your food in the back. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> or so call. maybe I am. So you are pulling a Toby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. partial. Um, I don't remember what I was saying, That's honestly. All right. start, a, start a new topic. I don't know. What do you what, think? What do you think of Doomsday Clock 12? I, it's hard to critique it right here because I just jammed through it yes, for the exactly. show. And so it's like it hasn't had time to settle. It's That's what we want. The I, fresh don't, I don't know. You know, we're going to talk about Watchmen coming up here in an hour <laughs> or however long. You thought <laughs> Next 9 yes. o'clock. <laughs> you thought 10 o'clock. You thought 10 o'clock. Um, you son of a bitch. I am def- <laughs> stupid asshole. I am definitely, I'm definitely in the camp of – I was definitely in the camp of leave Watchmen alone already. Yeah. Like, quit doing the Julie Schwartz, his term, archaeologist, who just mined the past for old stories and picked these bones clean. So, it, the Watchmen show, comment on that coming up, but this was a... Oh, I remember what I was going to say. Got it. Ding, ding, ding. All right. Dot, dot. Shut your fucking <laughs> mouth, Scott. <laughs> Dot, dot, dot. If you can't play Superman in continuity as the first superhero, yep. because the JSA is chronologically tied to that, then what I really like that this book does is place him as the most important hero, yep. even if he wasn't first. Because that's where I think I prefer him to be first. You can't really do it and have him be 35 years old or yep. whatever. I get that. But having putting him on the pedestal as the main superhero – is a good. He's the he's the anchor. Yeah, and and that's the entire point of the metaverse, right? That everything yeah. revolves around yeah. Superman, and as it should. Yes, and yeah. so I love that part. <laughs> yeah. I love that they did that. I also love how Gary Frank draws him to look like Christopher Reeve. Yep, yep, Because yep. that's really cool to imagine the Christopher Reeve Superman saying all this dialogue. And I don't understand, and I think you commented on this as I was chewing. Um, <laughs> the Superboy that's in here is not the Superboy that is in the Legion. No. Well, somebody else who's drawing a paycheck to figure that out. Ben just that right. I, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Ben just gets to figure <laughs> yeah. this one out. Yeah. Uh, but again, you can do this, right? Because time yeah. has been fixed. Mm-hmm. So all it is is that the Legion goes back. Superboy was in the Legion, and now they've come back and said, "Oh, we'd like your son as well." Done. Solved. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, you could you can work around. You could sure. still have Unity Day be today, right? I mean, the, the whole idea. You could still have them be ins- have been inspired by th- both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It works. I, that's the whole point of the continuity change. And um, I love the Saturn girl goes back. The ring goes back. Well, right? Wait, he's not in here. Who's that? Superboy's not in this. No, no, because Superman it, now. It's, it's him. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's him now. But all John. of these, all of these characters, it's the current version is the current version. Yeah. So, and Superman is the current version of Superboy. Yeah, but John. He means the John oh, Kent John, Superboy. Yeah. The John yeah. Kent. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. No, what I was saying is um, I think this goes back to kind of a, a one shot that we got that that really just kind of teased a lot of stuff and s- laid the groundwork to getting <laughs> us to, to, like here, which was DC Universe or just Rebirth. Like the one shot. The one shot. Like it. It, yeah, I mean, it went directly it, into this. The, and that's <laughs> yeah. the thing is, is like John's builds so much of that that yeah. like. You know, we're st- like we haven't gotten it yet, but we're still like, what about three jokers? Like, what's going on with the three jokers? That's my next Twitter thread, Kevin. Right? Well, I say, well, <laughs> team twenty twenty. Team tw- team. We should start a new thread on New Year's Day. <laughs> not not in twenty nineteen. Yeah. Start a new thread on New Year's Day for those three titles that we discussed yeah. before. Yeah, well, um, but again, John's does such an amazing, amazing job with world building and. Um, Why am I lost with the last? Just, Scott's it, asking it, about the last page. I mean, <laughs> we'll just go straight into it. Do you see the panel? Do you see the panel a page um, or two ago where Mimes uh, or Marionette's baby is taken? Mm-hmm. Ding ding. That's ding. and then this is him putting his <laughs> yep essence into. 
So, oh, Jesus Christ. So Dr. Manhattan may be gone, but Dr. Manhattan's still around. And is then, my marionette son. Yeah. And they're trapped here. And they're here. <laughs> with with a daughter. So, uh, no. My yeah. marionette have a daughter? Didn't he say no, they were expecting? They were expecting, again, they're getting oh, a daughter. Because they've already had the son in the other universe. But they were pulled out after the fact. Oh yeah, yeah. They needed yeah, to be yeah, here for for, for sorry, Manhattan for to Manhattan. be their anchor. To, yeah, because yeah. they they're the ones that helped draw him into definitely need to read into that the DC because that was just a haphazard. Reading. And the thing is, is in in the Doomsday Clock, they're sit, they be, they bump nasties in it, and there's like they're just having a grand old time yeah. in the D, the DC proper. And he says in this that you're expecting a daughter. Is that not the kid that they take? No, the kid they takes the son. They, they didn't take him. They left him. The the one that's taken is the one that's born already. Yeah. So when you see her screaming, that's already happened. Right, but but because watch because Manhattan can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's the son. That's the son. Right, right. But right. they're having a daughter. Right, right. Okay, okay. Yes. Sorry, I was. They're having a daughter in the DC universe. They've sure. already had the son. Sure, sure. Right, right, right. Okay. Um. Yeah, it's just big reread comment. <laughs> Have to okay. do it. Can uh, we talk about Gary Frank's direct? Oh, well, like, like identical, identical. Yeah, Watchmen look, like monster very, page. It looks exactly like David Gibbons' page. It's it's crazy how accurate that is. Yeah, oh, you know, it's a big tentacle with a big uh, it's a big squid. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, um, like I said, we're gonna be once more stuff is announced. Now that this book is out, coming into the big events for next year, we'll have more discussions about Doomsday Clock and what this book Let's is gonna chat lead about to. it again in a couple weeks to see if it's yeah. still made an impact. Oh, yeah, oh, it's made an oh. impact. Yeah, yes. Uh, and this is a very long and short way to say that Doomsday Clock is by far one of my favorite comics of the year, possibly my favorite. This I was issue, hoping it would have been one of my favorite comics the next year. But it, it <laughs> this issue blew me away. <laughs> Touche, Kevin. We are going to wrap up. That's it for this week. Thank you all very much. I hope you guys had a good year 2019 reading comic books. Of course, if you'd like to discuss any more of these books at length, feel free to go over to the Patreon. I'm oh, sorry, to the forums over at... Uh, Oh, I didn't read the Patreon. Did you read it last week? No, I got to read the. Pa- I thought you read it last week. The Patreon. Uh, I think I had a couple of Patreon um, uh, backers that I need to uh, uh, acknowledge. Uh, no, well, no, no, no. It's it's their um, it's their top comic lists. Uh, oh yeah. Sorry, I had to load it up here, and I did not even read the lists before we get out. <laughs> let me go over to the Patreon group and double check because these are our most dedicated, diehard, amazing, amazing uh, fans. And so I've got it here. I didn't get a ton of comments because I know there's a lot to talk about. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, James Laws, his favorite comics of 20. 20- 19, that'd be Harleen Strikeforce from Marvel and Unsacred. I don't even know what Unsacred is. That's crazy. Um, he also says, you guys have been an inspiration and guide for me. The Hive Comics and Games is a better comic shop because of comics conspiracy. Um, th- that is that is actually the highest praise I could possibly get. Thank you very much, James. I, I, I really hope um, you take the little bit we talk about here. Ignore all the nonsense. That's really cool. It is. It's that really is cool. super yeah. cool. Yep. Because yep, he, he, he bought a shop a little while ago, and uh, I'm telling him. Where's are his things. shop? I don't know. I don't remember. I have it in front of me here. Darn it, James! You need to let us, us know so we can yeah. send people there or go there ourselves. <laughs> yep. Send us over. Yeah, because if, if Scott's traveling, he will definitely. I visit. will go. <laughs> um, and Chris Lockhart, his top three comic books of the year: Jimmy Olsen, a personal favorite of mine; Conan the Barbarian, and of course, Doomsday Clock. Uh, there is uh, a lot of good books there. Zach Johnson's top comics of 2019, Lois Lane. Again, another one, personal favorite of mine. Batman Universe, great Bendis book. If you haven't read that. Haven't read it. Very fun. Little, and Superman. A story from the Walmart books. Haven't and a special shout-out to the History of the Marvel Universe for being incredible as well. I need to read that. I, I really do. So, uh, very good list, guys. I'm sorry for, for not having this early in your episode, but I got your list here for a movie and TV episode. Um, 
thank you again to all our Patreon backers, especially Joe Duff, Andrew Nelson Mendez over a recovery of an anime junkie podcast, Craig Anderson at CraigPAnderson.com, Jimmy Rivera at the social forum, that's F O U R U M dot Buzzsprout dot com, and of course, James Laws, just said. Thank you guys for your continued support. That's patreon.com slash comic conspiracy. If you go to comic conspiracy podcast.com, geekbox.net, and Apple Podcast, you can find all our previous episodes there. Rate and review it always helps. YouTube.com slash comics conspiracy is where you can find our episodes on YouTube. Uh, if you'd like to send us an email, the comic conspiracy at geekbox.net, you can send us some long form questions there. And if you go to comicsconspiracy.biz, that is our store's physical website where you can purchase comic books for delivery, mail order, all through Comic Hub. Here, let's talk about the hub all the time. Hashtag love the hub. If you would like to hear uh, more from Brock, you can head over to conspiratorbrock.com. His blog and video pull lists are there. Wanders in the Fourth Dimension podcast. That's Charlie's Doctor Who podcast. And, of course, look for Charlie and Bryce's thoughts about their favorite stuff from 2019 uh, on the New Year's uh, uh, week episode. If you go to Etsy.com slash shop slash Leanne Hill Art, that is my wife Leanne's Etsy store, of course, LeanneHill.com. You can see all her prints and work over there. We have all her prints available at the store as well. If you're on Twitter, you can follow all of us. I'm Ryan Higgins Ryan. Brock is Brock Sager. Toby is Toby XI. Uh, Scott is CSJ. Kevin Sharp is that Kevin Sharp. The store is Comics Con Store. And please listen to myself on the Geek Box every week with Ryan Scott and Justin Haywald, as well as our good friends over at Manga Machinations. We uh, appreciate all the support you guys can give our friends. And uh, thank you for your continued support of this podcast as well. Hope you guys had a good time. Hopefully we didn't spoil Doomsday Clock too much for you. We had kind of a wild, crazy talk. Go read it. We'll talk much more about it in the coming weeks and months. That's it for this week. We'll see you next week for our top movies and TV shows of 2019 that are based on comic books. There's a lot to talk about. See you then. (laughs) 